I guess I might as well go ahead and dive into this game a little bit, starting a little bit late because of technical difficulties because I'm Lauren, which you might uh, have noticed uh, Stray had a bunch of technical difficulties. I'm going to try to get that up to tonight or tomorrow. Uh, my apologies. That was a bad time <laughs> of technical stuff. Thank you, Sound Chaser. I appreciate it. Well, it's been a bit since Majora's Mask. A few things have changed around here. Um, hi, Beast Practices. Hello. H Happy November, everybody. Happy NaNoWriMo to anybody who does NaNoWriMo. I, I do NaNoWriMo and will be trying to finish up once I finish streaming. I will try to get the rest of my word count for today. Um, I, I think I should remember to put skill points in. What, what do we think? Should I actually remember that skill points exist in this video game? <laughs> oh, I've completed Nano a few times. Actually, my very first NaNoWriMo in 2002 um, was this big revolutionary experience for me as a storyteller because like I'd had um I'd, I'd been one of those people who just like revised and revised and revised and revised the first page or the first the first chapter if I was lucky enough to make it to a chapter and just never quite finished things I was always a perfectionist about trying to get it right and not knowing what I was doing and then NaNoWriMo forced me to just blast on ahead which was very good for me so I've done it several times. Um, I've succeeded several times, rather. I've done it a number of times, um, and this year I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it and see what I can do with it. Um, if you aren't familiar with NaNoWriMo, it's the National Novel Writing Month, although it is actually international at this point. It is writing 50,000 words in the month of November, which comes to 16 1,667 words a day on average. So it's exciting. That's legit. I think that that's a legit decision. You don't have to do one consecutive story. You don't have to follow any of the rules. Oh my god, Chrono, amazing. All right, so what we have available, we have Strike From Below, um, which I don't really strike from above ever. And I don't know that I'll ever lead or strike. I, the thing is, folks, I just shoot everybody or I hit them really hard in the face. That's not stealthy. If I'm, if I'm stealthing them, I'm stealthing them with my bow. So I don't really feel like those are relevant to me. Here we've got a strong strike, which could be useful for silent strike because you can do that to robots. Um, let's see what else we got. Fast reload, oh, that sounds useful. Triple shot, I've, I've used double shot a couple of times now. Fighting back. This is literally the only game in my life where this is not the thing I immediately beeline to put my points into because I'm not usually low on health in this game because it's so easy for things to one-shot you if you're low on health. Um, otherwise, this would definitely be a thing I would take in all sorts of all sorts of games as I'm limping along in low health and I'm getting like Lauren's 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 skill bonus, the the player skill, <laughs> the player skill bonus, in addition to the character skill bonus. Um, I I had a novel that I was rewriting that was my college, my my master's thesis. Um, but um, I'm working on something different now, and I'm gonna try to finish it up. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I've written like a chapter and a half of this, but I've actually had a short story that this is kind of it's kind of part of chapter one and two um i had a short story of these characters published um uh but things have changed so we'll see how it goes i'm, I'm, I'm excited about it um maybe we'll do creative sprints shall we do creative sprints this month shall i start this back up for nano i know everybody else is going to be doing things like that but it would probably be good for me convince me that it's okay to set some side some time aside I do not have a literary agent yet. If you have a polished, finished book and you are looking to find publication for it, in the traditional publication, like with, uh, with uh, regular publishing companies, then yes, you will you will want to go through an agent. Um, if you publish short stories, you will you won't need an agent for that for most things. Um, so it depends. You can ask me a lot about about. Um, about publishing and writing, I have I have my master's of fine arts, <laughs> an advanced degree in in creative writing. This is my this is my field. Um, all right, so gather resources while mounted. I don't Pringles very much. 
What is this? Expert carver. Ah, uh, this could lead to getting stuff more, which could be nice. Oh, 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 oh. I think I'm going to do this if only for annoyances. I'm going to do this. It's not going to make the game any easier, but it's going to make it less obnoxious for me. There we go. Yeah. When, where is the... Okay, this is infinite Pringles. Okay. Maybe someday we'll get infinite Pringles. But today is not that day. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Chrono. Um, I can get maybe some new clothes. Um, yeah, so looking for an agent. Look up writers um, in this sort of subgenre that you write. And see what agents they have. Um, make a list of the agents who represent books that are similar to yours in some way. And then keep an eye out to see if they are taking new clients. And then you can apply or well, submit to them. Definitely do some reading. Um, reading into it a little bit and do a little planning in advance before you do it. Um, there's a lot of good advice out there. There's a lot of bad advice as well. Um, but... Like, Lauren, you should pay attention to these wires. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. What is my resource that's all... Oh. A corrupter. <laughs> right? I forgot I got a corrupter lens last time. It was very exciting. Look at how much more inventory or space I got. Oh my god, amazing. Terra Blaster. Weapon... Wait. What was that? What did I just get? What weapon did I just get? Punishment, the vision. What 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 weapon did I just get? I have wait, what's a tear blaster? What is I'm sorry, I I must have picked up Oh So if you aren't sniping them from afar with your terror blast arrows, you can just knock their <laughs> you can knock their clothes off. <sighs> okay. Excellent. No, that's not a shotgun. The shotgun is I don't have the shotgun. But there is a shotgun. The shotgun is the thing that takes these. That's a shotgun. The rattler. Yes. Okay. Craft carry capacity. Did my carry capacity go? Oh, tear blaster. Okay. Ammo tear blaster. Well, good to know. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right. Okay, I've, I've stalled. I've done some stuff. I'm going to put us, okay, so, so I keep saying that, um, well, no, but the thing is with the submachine gun is that they do a lot of damage. Shotguns do not have nearly as much force in the individual pellets. What makes a shotgun damaging is the uh, the spray and if you're particularly close to it, but it doesn't go far. Um, so that's where the Rattler is very, very definitely that. Um, very definitely the shotgun sort of thing where the, the damage is mostly if you're up close. Um, but it doesn't have the most projectile power. Um, all right, all right, all right. So the past couple of streams, we've done side quests. And it's actually been a good opportunity for me to reflect a little bit on um, what I like or don't like in side quests and pacing in open world games. Because the first day that we did side quest stuff, we did the, the Queen's Gambit, all of the Queen's Gambit type of stuff. 
and I really, really enjoyed it. I had been like no side quest, and I was like, well, clearly I'm taking this. Clearly this is going to happen. Um, and I kept doing more and more and more of it, because I'm just like, I can't stop. And so it had me do some of the... I think we concluded that it is safe for me to say that that had some of the hardest stuff that I've encountered so far in the game. And I, 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 I was more than willing, like, you want to throw a corrupted T-Rex at me? Okay, fine. Because I was invested enough in the characters and their situation. Um, I was really, uh, like, emotionally invested, partly because it built on um, how much I already cared about Avad. Like, the fact that it was Avad's little brother definitely added a layer to it, um, partly just because, I mean, it's a fairly easy thing to get people to care about kids that are hurt or scared. Um, so so it, it, it kind of pushed some buttons, but it was also well done and also had uh, Vanasha is very, like, charming and funny. Um, it, it, I can't remember his name, but the this the, the the general soldier guy like he was really likable too um and they both had a had a a, a shocking oath that thank you it was close i knew that it was a vowel beginning began with a vowel um but uh but they they had a lot of very quickly defined reasons to care about that so no matter how hard the challenges they threw at me were like i was like i don't really want to put this down you know um and and then we did some other side quests where we were doing stuff that was related to the Hunter's Lodge, which is interesting. Um, and they've, they've kind of been unraveling little bits of really interesting story along the way. Um, but I don't have any emotional investment in it or emotional engagement. And I think no matter how, how like, oh, that's interesting, something is, it's not as gripping for me personally if there's not the emotional value there um if if if, if that makes sense uh yes and, and also one of the hunters was 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 very decidedly not not shirted and the girls all wear midriff shirts so i'm sorry talana but you were midriff at first i hope that amused those of you who who know the game and are here in the peanut gallery i hope you were amused to be like She's calling this really important character who she'll probably wind up liking. She's just calling her dismissively, calling her midriff, huh? Um, but yeah, like as much as I like, I like Talana well enough. And if the gameplay elements for Talana were easy, um, I would be willing to put more like effort into following that storyline potentially. Um, but it turns out that, like, even kind of liking her, like, even liking her setup well enough and, and like, really disliking, like, apparently spiting somebody who I don't have a personal investment in, he's just obnoxious um, and a misogynist and a bigot, um, apparently that's not enough spite. They gotta really make me care um, because we're going to go do the main story quest even though we are literally on top of one of the side quests. The, the side quest we're on top of is not actually the Hunter's Lodge one. Um, but they're, they're sending me to go fight T-Rexes and I don't feel comfortable fighting T-Rexes. Um, well, the thing is the Hunter's Lodge doesn't really necessarily feel like they're chores per se, because they are remarkable and challenging fights. Like, it was really interesting to be like, what if I fought a bunch of things that I'm usually scared to fight? Um, for the initial Hunter's Lodge thing, which I really did enjoy, like, there was a certain, like, sure, why not? Let's, let's do it. Because in the previous stream, we'd accomplished that. Um, but it was kind of neat to give me that incentive to push myself. Um, but T-Rexes and Stormbirds are in another league. So, I'm not as confident in those. Um, so, we're going to go to the main story quest. Because I'm really interested in this main story quest. The main story overall. Right here. Um, and, and something particularly worth noting. Is that we're going to find out whether my... Um, my read on what's happened in the past is correct. Basically, I have gotten so cocky. <laughs> I 
How do you guys put up with me between this and Hades? <laughs> and Hades, like, I got to the point where I was just like, I know what the story is and the backstory is, and the specifics might throw me off, but I, I know the general details. And in this, in this one, I'm just assuming that I'm right at this point. If it turns out that I'm wrong about what Zero Dawn is, I'm gonna be like shocked. Have a better one. Like stunned if I'm wrong. I mean, it could it could happen. It could happen. Come Do gawk at our exile. Let's see you gawk when we finally retake This is the Kestrel. Kestrels don't wear shirts. Their backs are exposed. I I agree with Why you. Why do we do to deserve this? Oh, you know, I could uh I could Friday days are coming, friend. I could list a few things actually of of what your your people have done to deserve this. Um but, uh, was bad enough, but at least we had our sun king to guide us. Yes, perhaps some of them should leave. Perhaps some of them should realize um Perhaps some of them should realize that they should leave that like. and like abandon abandon their their posts, abandon their traitorous what ways. What are you waiting around for, Outlander? Bounties are announced inside. Okay, so I gotta get another one of these, huh? Yeah, if it turns Trust out that I'm wrong, reasons. they Well it's also Either possible then. that I have Is read into no things or to put our faith in? Or made connections that, that were incorrect. Lucent Bahabas is announcing the bounties inside, Outlander. Alright. Yeah, no, we I'm sure. Keep our sun king safe. I'm How sure too, Dark to Puck, but at the very least, they are disheartened, and it's going to take something really day, big. Our sun king is here. The next, he's gone. Potentially, like something some really bad dream. will happen next to uh to uh try to raise their spirits, so to speak. Ah, I know the game is yelling at me. I'm talking, game. Do you mind? The game is like, yes, I do mind. All right. Don't stride around like you own the place, Outlander. Excuse Sunfall me. Sunfall is for true Karja. Excuse me. I'm going to stride around like I own the place. Thanks very much. But yeah, so if you're joining me for the first time during my Horizon Zero Dawn streams, I will tell you, um, I really like to predict what's going on in games and piece together the story and so on and so forth. And... I've been pretty confident about what's going on in the story of this game for a while now. And we're about to get confirmation about about it. Well, ab about to might be a bit strong because we're going to have to probably go fight some hard stuff. Thanks, Tim, for joining. Um, thank you for lurking. And, and to other lurkers, hello and welcome. I'm happy to have you here. I hope you enjoy yourselves. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so we're going to get confirmation on what Zero Dawn is. And I'm really cocky about it. I actually kind of feel like the game should put me in my place. <laughs> there needs to be a game that uh, that's like anyway, Lauren. You thought you you thought you uh, you had it figured out, but it's actually more complicated than you realized. That'd be fine, um, as long as it's not something that they're doing for the sake of being shocking. If that makes sense. Um, there's not anything. The Balustrade. It's a short drop from there. Thanks. Silence. You're a hero to us all. Oh look, I'm gonna be climbing up that. Aren't you proud of me? Aren't you, you should be proud of me right now that I recognize that I'm gonna climb up that. Um He must have been so scared when they came for him. Ah, so they're telling themselves that they, their Sun King has been has been kidnapped. And he was scared. Well he was scared alright, but not of not of me. Hello, buddy. Yeah, see, like, the Kestrels? Okay, so the regular soldiers don't have backs on their shirts. The Kestrels don't have fronts on their shirts. Our hunger keeps us sharp. Our hunger keeps us sharp. Tell me. Hunger. Oh, jeez. Yeah, being a Kestrel is bad news. I mean, I'm pretty sure that you can pick up from context what a balustrade is. Even if you don't know specifically what a balustrade is, like, you couldn't give the dictionary definition of it. Um, I'm pretty sure you, you can figure out that it's something that sticks off of a building that is where my little flag to go is. Um, but they're going to use the correct language because they can, and silence has the vocabulary to do it. 
Not without Edom and Agidas. All right, so this is also showing me that's where I'm gonna go. Okay, here we go. I like words. I don't like silence. Okay. Okay. There we go. I had a hard time. All right. Oh, look at that. This is actually nicely marked by bird poop, I assume, is what that's supposed to look like to catch my eye. So I, I'm notoriously bad at seeing climbing spots, but this one actually really does stand out. Whee. All right. Bye, Sunfall. So I'm a little concerned that I'm going to wind up in this ring killing some scary things like that thing that was levitating the rocks. Oops. Okay. Good. Is this right? No. Am I going down or am I going up? I look like I'm going down. Okay. No. Okay. Hold on. I'm gonna try. There we go. I'm gonna have to fight something really nasty down there, aren't I? The other side of the tower. Look for a vent. Oh my god, Aloy, Aloy, Aloy. I'm sorry, I have a really hard time with the climbing controls in this game. Why are my feet clipping through? They are clipping through the sand. That's fine, it's sand. Okay, so I'm pretty sure, by the way, these, these things right here, these like ancient one bunkery looking things I'm going to be sneaking back into and out of the city through them and given that this one looks like there might be like an opening right here yeah I see you've been here before <laughs> obviously now it's very important that you hear what I'm about to say I've shown you the way in but this humble vent marks a point of no return before you descend to the depths here, you should be fully committed, equipped, and focused. No distractions. If you have errands to run, do them first or hold your peace. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? You'll tolerate what I give you, Silence. I didn't ask you along for the ride. Amazing. All right, so that is a very good point. I appreciate when games tell you this is a point of no return, things will be different. Now, what I don't know is, is this being a point of no return, does that mean that some quests are going to no longer be available? Like, is this going to be like a breaking point in the story where things are different? Or is this just going to be like, once you go in there, you can't leave for a while? Um, and that's like, so it can mean either of those two things. Um, it definitely means you're gonna be in there for a while. Um, like, there's no question in my mind that like, once we go in there, we're stuck in there for a while. Um, looking at the side quests that I have, no, because I there's no way that it's gonna turn off all of my side quests at least, because I'm gonna get a power cell here that I need in order to go and get my Mewtwo armor. So <laughs> I should be able to do the rest of these. Especially because this one is higher level. Okay, not that one. I don't know where the, uh... Well, that's fine. It's all good. No, I'm pretty sure this is just telling me once we go in there. We're not going to be doing anything else for a while. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I have my sharpshoot bow. I have some clothes. I can't get the clothes that I most want. Um, I have some wire, hopefully enough wire to get by. Otherwise we'll be in trouble. Is 89 wire enough? <laughs> or should we go get more wire from the merchants in town? I'm not sure. Palms, rope, lamp oil. Yes, those are all very good things to double check you have before proceeding into the unknown. Or wire. 
89 arrows. Is that a lot of arrows? Hmm. No. No, I think I need more. How do we feel about that? Will you forgive me? If I teleport and go get some more wire. No, I, I, I already opened all my boxes. <laughs> Sorry. Where is my merchant? Merchant. All right. I know that the merchant's here because he just yells a lot like merchants do. Like, come buy stuff for me. Buy stuff for me. Hey, come buy stuff for nice me. Have a break. Come buy stuff for me. Whee! I'm Aloy. I'm helpful. I'm not, actually. But I made it to the merchant, so we're all good. All right. Let us buy. What else am I going to do with my money, huh? I don't know. So I'm just going to buy a lot of these. I'm just going to use this to make sure that I have enough stealth arrows to take on anything. Okay. That's probably pretty good. <laughs> I think I doubled that. I should probably have a few more of these just in case. That's for corruption ammunition types, which I don't use. Wow, this is like if you need you need arrow, you need wood and you need it now. I think I'm okay for this. I think we're good. I'm gonna maybe buy some more just to be sure. Oh, I see, I felt like that was, I thought that having just over one full stack was, I mean, I guess I have more, well, whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna laugh at myself for this, but yeah. Okay, we have a pack of wood, <laughs> just in case. Um, what else, what else, what else? Anything else? A rock bundle? <laughs> you could just buy a bundle of rocks. I'm sorry, but that's really funny. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny, <laughs> but it is funny to me. Sticky bombs? I don't think I even have a thing to, I guess I must have a thing, okay. I want to see... Okay, they've got this. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this takes on my wire. A brew made from animal extract. Okay. We'll get one more of those. And I've even regathered up some more of my... My red healing berries so we're actually doing okay all right time to run up and see if the cars get mad at me as i run past them and see if i get lost horribly on my way up ah. The thing is that I never get wood. Like, I never pick it up. And I, like, haven't run out yet, which is, I think... I trust you can at least pretend to Hi, Mastermind. Eyes. Welcome. Okay. I'll come back later. I got it. That woman said to meet her at a green tent down in the camp. Might be worth a visit. Okay, that, that thinks that I should go do that quest that I've already done. Okay, so maybe, maybe the game actually assumes that I'm going to have... Um. Oh shoot! Well, that's one way of doing it. <laughs> um, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. Real professional, right here. Aren't you impressed? Interesting, though. So silence has been here and he's been up to something. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning what his past is so that I can gloat over him. 
Okay, blue glass. I have clearly paid no attention to the status of my my wood inventory. Um, well, we can see what happens. We we do have uh, we do have now four hundred. <laughs> so hopefully that'll do. We'll see. The worst that can happen is that I can no longer stealth my way through situations. And will be very sad. If I get the option to save inside, I will save on a different save. How's that? We'll keep this as a we'll keep a poison save. Does that sound good? If you're not familiar with the concept of a poison save, it's for those games in which resting when you're poisoned can either cure you of the poison or kill you, and you don't know for sure what's gonna happen because there's a certain degree of RNG involved. Um and so you make a separate save. That's what I call it. This is like, it's like salsa barrels. I, d I don't know that that's the official term, but when I call something a poison save, that's what I mean. Um, I, I, I came up with the, 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 the need to do this. I, I realized the need to do this and also used that name um, when I'm playing the uh, shareware PC game, Castle of the Winds. <laughs> Because it was specifically for that situation when you've been poisoned and we're trying to sleep it off. So it was a poison save. I even made like, cause this is when I was in like elementary and middle school. And so my best friend and I would play that game together. And we actually made a little like snake coil thing that you could put a candle on and we would light that <laughs> so that we would have a higher likelihood of not dying. <laughs> huh. Oh, that's smart, Dark Puck. I don't know what games... <sighs> okay, so that's the thing, like, it's come up in games before occasionally false streaming, and I'll be like, I need to make a poison save. Um, but probably something that I just say without thinking and then blitz right past it. <laughs> Blade Tiger, I'm so happy you know Castle of the Wind. And the sprites that cut off at the thigh because the guy who made it was still learning how to make games. <laughs> I really like... I really liked that game, but we called it Stupid Game because of its flaws. Do you know it has basically the exact same pl plot as, um, what's that? What's that? Um, Baldur's Gate. <laughs> oh, man. Good job, Bioware. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all the Bioware fans out there. I'm sorry I'm about to make fun of Bioware, <laughs> Bioware again. Castle of the Winds was an important part of my childhood, too. The first and second game. They're delightful. Alright. So we can go in and make a second save. If we need to. How's that? Let's see what happens. What's the worst thing that can happen? I run out of stuff and I'm stuck. We'll find out. I'm gonna... I'm not YOLOing. This doesn't count as YOLOing, though. I did too much planning. There you go, Lynn in Denver. No, that is that is fair. Those are, uh, those are definitely a, a bunch of plausible bad things that could happen. It is unlikely that my PS4 will be full of bees, although you can have... I remember when I worked at GameStop, we had somebody bring in a console full of cockroaches. That's more likely than bees. Do not recommend. <laughs> oh, man. Good time. We also ran over an N64 with a pickup truck to see what would happen, and it still worked. So I can confirm that an N64 is tough enough to be run over by a pickup truck and still work. Amazing. Um, anyway, I'm going to... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in here and see what happens. All right. I might regret this. So they want you to have finished that side quest I'm be heading down. before you I've go in here. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world. Where the machines came from. How the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death. A lifetime of failure. As year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. 
until a Nora Huntress marched out of the savage east. And voila, for her, all the deepest secrets of the earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Hold for identiscan. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Malfunction. 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 Are you kidding me? You don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! Access request acknowledged. Root command functions available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus! Yes. Emergency venting authorized. What is it venting? Everything. That will draw attention. We won't have this place to ourselves for long now. <laughs> we? Last I checked, I was the one risking my life down here. Yes, fine. Now will you please get moving? There's so much to learn in less time than I'd hoped. Man. She's clever. The fact that she... That she... Took a guess, kind of. That she could say she was a little bit Sobek. And it would do something, even if she doesn't fully understand, say, voice recognition. And it's interesting that her voice is similar enough to be recognized. And I thought that it, given the nature of what I think happened here, you can understand why I might be concerned that venting would not just be air. That there might be something else in the air that could potentially cause trouble in the world up above. Jesus, the music got intense. I'm nervous. It did warn me. Locked to the dent identist scan. There is a there is a data point over there. I see it. It's flickering. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. We found it. Are you really so surprised? Facility diagnostics detect multiple failures. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Have a look around. I'm looking around. Part of me feels like maybe I shouldn't snipe the data points from halfway across the room. Are we really near the end of the game, I wonder? Something bad's probably gonna happen when I read this, but let's find out. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna take a moment <clears throat> because I suspect that we are very close to uh, uncovering the truth. Just to very quickly recap at this point, I'm fairly certain that in order to prevent everything on Earth from being consumed eternally and then all life on Earth being gone forever, um, my 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 expectation based on what they have given us and the the story pieces they have given us the evidence that we've had piecing things together um is that um elizabeth sobek has decided to invest in a future that may that will never be seen um so far off that there will be no no direct descendants short of aloy being a clone of the people from their their era um basically uh, covering all organic material with some sort of a substance that is um, non-organic and, and, and inedible to the machine swarms, so they will essentially starve to death. Um, and then after a long period of time when all of the machines are no longer functional, um, the Earth gets repopulated through an ARC project that I assume not just Elizabeth Sobek, because I suspect that that Zero Dawn is her, like, 
part of her component. Um, but no, but she's a she's a specialist in environmental environmental technology. She's a specialist in artificial intelligence. Um, and so she has saved the world and brought it back from a number of natural disasters already through the technological advancements that she's created um, as part of her enterprises. So she, to some, to some degree, has already kind of fulfilled prerequisites to be able to do things like take an entirely inorganic world um, and bring back the things necessary to bring life to it again. Um, so whether there's something that needs to be done to like break forth the um, like the soil and make sure that the water is, is, is in good shape, like she's done that before. Um, introducing, um, like I don't know how they're gonna introduce enough biodiversity to have a planet that's not gonna just suddenly implode on itself. Um, but I feel like they, pro they, they froze to some degree, like flash froze, like like seeds and embryos and things. Um, and so the flowers, the mark flowers that we see, the metal flowers that go out, I believe those are responsible for going out into, um, into the soil once it has reached a point that it can sustain plant life again um, and, uh, and spreading seeds. Um, and so that is like the, the reemergence of plants now it's it's tricky and i suspect there's going to be a certain degree of suspension of disbelief that we're going to have to do here um because so much of flora and fauna in modern society or not modern society but like like the world as we know it in the um oh what's the name is it the paleocene is that the name no not paleocene no what is it what is the um i'm trying to remember what it is no, 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 it, it, it's, it's got something to do with humans. But anyway, like the, the era of humans that we live in, pl Pleistocene, I don't know how to say that word. Um, but the era of of, of the anth anthro, anthro, yes, that's it. Thank you, Blade Tiger. Yes. Um, so so the, the, the era of life on Earth that we live in now, um, so much has evolved over such a long period of time that while we still do have some living beings today that have not changed in incomprehensible amounts of time, there are still ancient life forms, um, a lot has changed and changed and changed and changed and things have grown and evolved and changed together. Um, and so because you happen to have these two things that are kind of like going through um going through generations in parallel um they're going to develop differently because they're together than they might have on their own um and so while i might say you should develop you, sh you should replant the f the the plants before you introduce um the the animals you can't do that to some degree because the plants depend on the animals for pollination um, for, for, I mean, most, uh, for pollination, for seed dispersal, for things like that. Um, and so, uh, and so you, you kind of, I don't know that I believe that humans would be able to take all of the different factors into consideration to make a properly balanced world that would be self-sustaining, that would recreate the intricacies of our era of life on earth but i'm willing to suspend my disbelief that in a work of fiction they could especially because they do have superior technology there might be a way for them to successfully model it somehow um also i think microorganisms are safe so i think microorganisms might still be able to uh, survive despite the um the swarm and maybe that'll do something i don't know um but so to some degree and we'll see what degree of of, of of suspension of disbelief is necessary for this because you need to have enough biodiversity um to 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 hit kind of all of the key points um because 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 we're all part of this web of life that is interconnected on so many levels um you know, you have like, you know, the mushrooms decaying things that die and then returning that to the soil, which then turns into plants, which is then eaten by animals. Um, and again, pollination and seed dispersal and things like that. Like there's just, there's so many factors, but I'm willing to accept that if you have enough super geniuses and there's supercomputers that we can kind of wave our hands and say, yes, we found a way to do it. 
if they've actually addressed the specific specific concern of mine, I'll be very impressed. Um, uh, I would just do some hand waving <laughs> if I were the writer, because that's so complicated. Um, I would just say like, yeah, they did it. They did it. It's fine. We, we, we got it. We modeled it. Um, it's possible that that's what the um, what the robot animals were there to do. Um, but so the so they've recreated so 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 sometime in the far far distant future, um, like plants are able to return and animals are able to return, and then humans come forth from Mother's Cradle, which is an arc, which I believe probably we had frozen embryos or maybe even pre embryo stuff of some sort. Um, and that there was the, an artificial intelligence, which was Mother, which shared stories with the first people, which in this section of the world, the first people came to be in the world of, in the, the, the region of the Nora. And then some of them stayed behind and were the Nora and held what they were told by the artificial intelligence known as Mother, held that very closely. Um, and others spread out and turned into different cultures, perhaps because of the influences. Like it's, I kind of wonder whether this AI that's been corrupting the Karja, um, clearly even before um, Avad's father was corrupted, by this, it's clear that the art that, that the artificial intelligence has been kind of influencing the actions taken by the Karja for a long time. Like the Karja have built things and resettled in locations and done things according to visions that they've had, presumably placed in their head by an artificial intelligence. Um, so I think that there there's there's somebody who's actively trying to influence the course of human history to accomplish what it wants to accomplish, and I think that's Hades. Um, but there's also this this artificial intelligence known as Mother, um, that uh, shepherded the, the 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 early the earliest humans in this modern era, the Nora, um, and gave them what they know of how the world works. Um, and so, as far as I can tell, this is what Zero Dawn is all about. So we're gonna find out. And so from here on out, every data point that I get is going to confirm, deny, expand, something like that. This, which is why I wanted to get it all out in one place. I don't think I've missed, have I missed any of the things that I've talked about before? Um, I think this is all the things that I've talked about. I think this covers all the ground I wanna cover. My memory is not as bad as it could be. I am remembering some of the things that I have said and experienced in the past with video games. And I'm remembering character names. It's very exciting. Still not a perfect memory, but um, it's it's slightly more functional than it has been at at, at past points in the past. Hi, Ampy. You just you just missed the the brain dump. The final, I think, final brain dump of what Lauren thinks Zero Dawn is all about. Um, but yeah, so so by necessity, then Zero Dawn involves the death of all of humanity, um, and all life on Earth, um. And then they get calcified. Whatever, whatever the substance is that we see over them in that first bunker, where I'm like, "That's strange. What is this stuff that's covering everything? And it's covering all of the surfaces. It's covering everything." Um, I think Zero Dawn is, is that is the covering of everything with that. Um, and so everyone is going to die, <laughs> and uh, that's part of why nobody can know what Zero Dawn is. But we're banking on this meaning that Earth has a future and humanity has a future. The people present do not, but they wouldn't regardless. Um, they're desperate, and so... I'm not 100% sure that I believe that enough humans would see the value in something that doesn't affect them or their direct descendants enough to be willing to go along with this. But I guess, um... I guess you can still, um... There just needs to be enough people of the with with the power and the ability to do it. Yeah, I don't know. My uh, my optimism on humanity has been uh, has been hurt <laughs> over the past few years. I've become less of a Talos principle and more of a, I guess, a bit more cynical about human nature. Not as much as other people, but yes, Elizabeth did have to blackmail Ted Farrow, but I I do mean more. Um, Tedward. That's a good, great, great name. I, yeah. Uh, I, uh, what was I saying? I was saying something. Oh, what was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? What was I saying? Oh, um, I was more thinking that there's a number of scientists working. Well, I'm curious and I'm eager to know more about the people 
involved with Zero Dawn, and I suspect we're going to get to get to know them. I'm sure some of them were involved with that first bunker. Like, perhaps that first bunker was where the people responsible for building Mother's Cradle, the original Ark. Um, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Are you ready? Oops. Let's do it. Another incident. Text mail from lounge staff. From lounge staff to admin. Subject, another incident. This morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovich. Oh, I'm concerned that might be a way of phrasing. <sighs> this morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovich is another example of reception's need for additional support. We appreciate that Zero Dawn is an immensely complicated project, but as the staff who serve on the front line, we're tired of being neglected. As we have already requested, we need human translators, fluent in Polish, for example, security staff, who can subdue enraged embryologists, for example, and dermal sedatives to cal calm persons who are screaming in Polish while hurling chairs and vases at reception staff, for example. Yes, most of the candidates are reasonably calm and well-behaved, but we need help handling the exceptions to that rule. Please respond. They're interviewing people to try to build the skills that they need to create Zero Dawn, and people are perhaps losing their minds in some cases because they're talking about candidates. So either they're 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 figuring out who's going to be on their team, or these are candidates for. This is going to be team. This is going to be team. An embryologist. That's clearly somebody who is relevant to what I think is happening with Zero Dawn. <laughs> I'm sorry. But okay, so we have a, we have staff who need support in dealing with the scientists that they're trying to recruit to build their team. Um, but if you think about it, I mean, people are going to respond not at their best when finding out what is happening. And perhaps that person is, is furious about... See, I had thought initially that that was going to be somebody who was stressed about the the difficulty of, of the work. Um, but I think that that's somebody upon hearing what is what is happening wants to stop it. I think what they're working on. But I'm not sure. All right. They're like, hey, you're not leaving here anytime soon. So like get some get some healing because you used some of it when you fell off things like a smart person who's good at things. I did say I was bad at climbing mechanics in this game. All right, let's do it. I don't think there's any, wait, wait. Yes, there is. Okay, I'm glad I didn't open that door. Okay, all right, here we go. We need support too from reception staff. From reception staff to admin. Subject, we need support too. Reception staff continues to require additional support managing ZD candidates when they arrive at the facility. Many are frightened or confused. Some are highly agitated. These are not the sort of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them. At minimum, at minimum, we need human translators, the Langbots are not sufficient, and mild sedatives for the extreme cases. Any and all support would be welcome. Perhaps you could start by responding to one of these mails. Huh. Okay, so these are out of order. That's really interesting. So these are saying the same thing. Okay, so it sounds to me like scientists are being grabbed kidnapped and brought here and not told why frightened or confused highly agitated these are not the sort of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them yeah yeah so this it's not job candidates and i didn't think that it was job candidates like apply and we'll consider you i thought it was more like trying to figure out if somebody was a good was a right fit or not um but wait this is triangular like the cauldrons 
I don't know that there's anything there with that. I'm going to sneak around a bit and see if there's anything else. Okay. Because they, uh, they had one of those. Just as I was about to say, well, it doesn't look like there's anything else in this room. There was something else in this room. And though this is a desperate situation, they are basically, they are excusing everything that they do in the chance of, that they might be able to make this work. Um, so a lot of, we, we already know that a lot of people have died. Um, a lot of people have died kind of buying time. They've put up, they, they've put civilians as soldiers. They're, they're, they are committing, they are committing crimes against humanity. Um, and they know it and they acknowledge it, which is very interesting um, that uh, I don't think there's any question that Elizabeth Sobek is somebody who has a conscience and has a set of morals, has a set of right, a sense, very, very strong sense of right and wrong. Um, but she's also very pragmatic. And I think she's able to say, like, in, in the case of, like, the short term feelings of my values, Versus the long-term consequences of what I do. Um, this is a worthwhile thing to do. The ends do justify the means. That's an interesting thing to have a logo here, you know? It just, it's interesting because it's, it's, it's an issue of the greater good, but it's an issue of the greater good at a level that is not comprehensible. It's hard to wrap your human mind around the idea that absolutely, like literally everything alive on the planet and during the time that you know it is going to die and soon, um, and that the benefits that you do, because it's one thing to say we make sacrifices now so that generations down the line don't uh, have a chance and that's that can that can be hard enough to get people to accept um but this this is like that to such an extreme such an extreme you know because because environmentalists will say like you know think of um think of future generations um there's uh there's the the seven generations um that is from some cultures like think of the the, the like re consider your actions such that you remember that the consequences of your actions you're thinking about the next seven generations after you um and that's hard enough but this is this is a whole nother level all right i'm not seeing anything else and i'm i'm trying really hard i really 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 don't want to miss anything here yeah it's just it's so fascinating that the way that things have formed here, the, the substance, the shape, the everything, nothing is quite what it, its equivalent would be like in nature. Yes. No, that's true, Dark Puck. And it is really interesting to think about that first bunker and put it into context. The more we learn. Oh, and I, I don't even remember how much I had an idea of back then. Um... Yeah, I think this is everything there is here. I just don't want to miss anything in this section, you know? There's just too much, too much I want to know. I want to know all of it. But I think I'm going to open this door. Please take a seat and wait for your name to be called. A selection of beverages and snacks are available. A smaller room. Yeah, okay, so that's the entry room, and this is, like, the waiting. Like, that's a reception. This is the waiting room. And the whole thing is 3D printed, because I was like, man, it takes, like, it's 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 hard, you know, it, it defies belief that they would be able to construct something this big this quickly. But, like, but no, no, now, we, because we know that all of these facilities have been 3D printed, because we found that out in the, um, the military one, um, that makes it much more plausible. So let's keep uh, digging into stuff, shall we? Soundproofing. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay, this is either going to be secrets or screaming. 
this is either going to be we're trying to prevent people from getting the information or this is going to be like people are losing their minds over this um and i wonder if we're going to kind of see i mean i know we're going to see the emotional toll that being involved with zero dawn is taking on the people in zero dawn that it's it's a it's a brutally difficult and 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 the sort of thing that'll break you um <laughs> You know, we, we just saw the, the human toll on the military that was defending them to ensure that they had a chance to do what they're doing. But I think we're going to see the consequences of doing this on the people who are doing it. But let's see. Soundproofing. Text mail from lounge staff. From lounge staff to admin. Subject, soundproofing. Would it be possible to improve the soundproofing between VR1 and the lounge area? Most of the candidates stay quiet during the presentation, but the ones who scream or sob can be plainly heard by candidates waiting their turn on in the lounge. Just a thought. Yeah. 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 So briefing people on what we're doing and knowing that you can't stop us. You can either help us or you can not be part of us, but you, but you, you don't get to, uh, you don't, you don't get to stop us. Like if you're going to stop us, like we're not letting you lose to go tell people what's happening here. So you either join us or you don't. And I kind of wonder what that or else is because I, again, Elizabeth is very pragmatic and everyone who is involved with Zero Dawn has accepted that people will die to make this happen. Um, both in the short term with the, uh, the soldiers necessary and the civilian soldiers necessary um, to try to stall the machines. Um, and then the inevitability of the entire death of all life on earth. <sighs> minor detail but but yeah the people 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 losing their mind over what is happening is i think a very good point and it's it's nice to frame this in the context of the stressed out admin like like lounge reception admin folks because there's a certain degree of, of humor in this and relatability in this like we've all we've all kind of been in some equivalent of this experience of um trying to get your bosses to listen while you try to deal with disgruntled people or things like that like it's it's, it's very relatable um and it's and it's, it's it's something that can be very easily like kind of played for for, for comedy a little bit is that, that 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 friction that 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 tension of of trying to get your bosses to solve a thing and not dumping it on you um but that the the normalcy mund mundanity of that juxtaposed with the quiet creeping horror because if you haven't already guessed all the stuff that i've guessed and tried to piece things together and you're kind of exploring and 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 and, and, and getting this as it comes you know that the candidate in the first the in the in the entry room is a scientist. There's this scientist of some sort. And these scientists are screaming and sobbing and attacking the admin staff. Like, it's... You know... You kind of get a sense. You you know that... You know that bad, that bad things are happening. You have some sense of that. Because of Elizabeth talking to the military leaders um, in the previous location. Um, but here, you're like, this is, this is, this is bad. What is, what is happening during the presentation is, is upsetting. And I think we're going to have to watch that. And that's going to be what reveals everything to us. So VR1, I don't know if that's going to show us everything that's happening in the, like, projected future. But we'll find out. I, I like how here the, uh, the staff, they're not even saying, like, we don't want to hear the scream or sob because they don't want to hear the scream or sob. I imagine that's very hard to listen to. But they're more like, this this could uh, this could be a problem with your, your folks that you're trying to get. Like, you brought these other people here and they're going to get upset and that might be bad. So maybe you'll care about how this is going to affect your project. But it's not that... I think in this case, it's not that Elizabeth doesn't care about people. It's just that she cares about these people. It's that she cares about other things more. Please 
proceed into viewing room one for an important message regarding the purpose of your visit. Of your visit. Very, uh, I'm pretty sure that that's very, very, very euphemistic. Hold on. No, we're looking around to see if there is anything else. You can't think I'm not going to get every little piece of data that I possibly can get my hands on here. I'm actually really curious whether I'm going to have an emotional response to 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 seeing this. Like obviously intellectually I'm fascinated. I've really really enjoyed piecing together this puzzle. I think they've done a wonderful job of giving you all of the pieces you need. To be fair, some of what um I'm I'm putting together to to create the, the 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 guesses that I've made is what I've brought to the table here because I am fairly well read in science fiction um and I I do think that that um gives me additional tools beyond what Horizon Zero Dawn is providing me but I do think that 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 even for those who don't have that they've done a really nice job of giving you a lot of information and I've tried to point it out where I see it um and that's been really fun and interesting um I have gotten emotional about the human cost of what happened in the past because they're very good at showing that to us in a very intimate, close level with individuals. Um, but this is going to be something on a grand scale, which is much, much, much harder to get emotionally, to get emotionally invested in, you know, if that makes sense. So, uh, I'm curious how they're going to do that and how that's going to work on me. I'm, they're very, very good writers. So I absolutely believe, oh, they do give me Ridgewood, don't they? I absolutely believe in their ability to do this effectively. Um, I'm just, I'm curious to see how and how I'm going to react. Restock or else from lounge staff. <sighs> For the fifth time, please restock the lounge's selection of herbal teas. If I have to listen to one more egghead throw a tantrum because we're out of the organic cucumber, mint, or blackberry sage varietals, I am going to lose it. Please respond. And this time, no tempest in a teapot or steep to mint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my friends this is what we call comic relief <laughs> video games have definitely in recent years taught me the importance of comic relief and the pacing of comedy in your um Oh my god, Phil. <laughs> see trouble brewing because tea, you see. Um, I like this because A, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to just explore the things, but I have to, I'm, they're so good at what they're doing and they're doing so much that I can't not tar start taking it apart and being like, look, do you see, do you see, do you see? Um, so this one is doing a whole lot. Continuing to humanize the um, the lounge staff, um, but it but it gives us it gives us the reader a a break a little like lift because this is you you know something bad you you know this is bad like I mean even if you're not like I know exactly or I I think I know exactly what's going to happen um, but even so like you know you should have you have a sense of a pen, impending dread here and you, if you you pick up on that with these previous messages as well like something is bad something is very very bad um and this gives you some levity from it um but also we know that being part of zero dawn is probably takes a massive toll on the people involved I mean, people who haven't even signed on board to be part of it are screaming when they find out about it sometimes. Um, although, again, some of them are clearly pragmatic and understand um, or have more reserved emotional responses. Um, 
But, uh, but so somebody who is, like, the admin who is responding to this, the fact that they are throwing back puns about tea, it says something about that. It makes us like them a bit more because puns are relatable, unlikable. <laughs> um... Uh, but also, I'm pretty sure that's comic relief for them in dealing with the situation that they are dealing with. Having opportunities to laugh, I imagine, is how they stay alive. So, Tempest in a Teapot and Steep Demand and Trouble Brewing is a good one. Very well done. Fell very well done. Um, so, Egghead is a, is, a, is a term used to refer to scientists and folks like that. Because, like, the big bald head... Um, I'm sure there's there's other explanations for that, um, but it's it's a it's a nerd, <laughs> the scientist. Um, throw a tantrum out of the organic cucumber, mint, or blackberry sage varietals. The use of the word varietal, um, it's 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 funny. So this is a nice little bit of of levity when I'm expecting that I'm going to have, you know, we're going to, we're going to hurt. The story's going to make us hurt soon. And so giving us that humor both gives us some relief so we can tolerate the growing dread of, of going through this and the anticipation. Um, but it, it also raises up our mood a little bit so that they're better able, so that it hurts more when they hurt us, um, which is a very good and intentional thing um, to play with as the storyteller you can, in fact, kind of shape someone's emotional responses. A celestial seasoning of humor, indeed. And you kind of almost wonder whether the, the lounge staff, to some degree, they're clinging to the normalcy. Like, maybe they are the pharaoh <laughs> admin, you know? Maybe there is something about the normalcy of complaining to your, um, the normalcy of complaining to your, uh, to your boss about a lack of support. This looks like an interview room or something like that because there's, a uh, well, there's chairs on either side of these tape. Well, no, maybe, but to me, this looks like these could be cubes of some sort. Like, I don't know, I don't know that I agree this is a check in place, but it definitely has, like, the, um, the thing that keeps you from looking at what's on the other side. Like, this is not where, obviously, like, the science is happening. Um, but this looks like this could be, this could be, like, preliminary interviews or something like that with the, the blinders on the sides. I'm not seeing any more um, bits of story that I might have uh, have missed here, so I might move on. Yeah. Nothing else popping up on the radar. Wait, wait, wait. Is this a side door? Can I get through? Can I get through this door? Is this another door? Is this a wrong door? Is this a wrong door? And if so, can I open it? No. No. I want to open the wrong door. I don't think I get to. Oh, yeah, very well, very well, maybe, Blue Glass. So you come, basically you go in there for processing. <laughs> you, you come in, they say, okay, we've got, we, we've got room for you. You go in here for processing. Somebody who's part of the team takes your information, talks to you a little bit, makes sure that they know what's going on. They try to keep things as non-technology based as they can. Oh man. I love Celestial Seasonings. Uh, they have a tea called Can Cane Lane that is the most nostalgic tea in the entire world. Possibly my favorite tea in the entire world. I love it so much. Chamomile room, maybe so. Chamomile is definitely soothing. All right, yeah, I don't see anything else. So we've had our levity. We've had our levity, we've had our ha ha tea. Ha ha puns onward shall we oh jeez oh jeez what was this place a 
holographic theater. CB01 data intact. Initiating playback. Here goes. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. I am General Harris, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Zero Dawn is a top secret super weapons program, the technological miracle that will save us from the Pharaoh Plague if Operation Enduring Victory can hold off the robots long enough. The reason I'm sure you've heard the rumors is that I'm the one who spread them, and they are all lies. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons program, and it will not save us. Nothing will save us. So here's why. By the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Our planet reduced to a barren sphere. Global extinction is inevitable. No matter how many we kill, the robots just keep exponentially making more. If we had their deactivation codes, we could shut them all down. The entire swarm. But since their cryptographic protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, cracking a code set would take half a century. At best, we've got 16 months. Not exactly what you'd call a survival option. The destruction of a biosphere is not the sort of apocalypse you can wait out in a fallout shelter or a space station. There will be no Earth left to reclaim. Just a lifeless, toxic rock with several million pharaoh robots on it, hibernating, waiting for something to eat. This is the horrible truth behind the lies of Operation Enduring Victory. My lies. Lies designed to inspire millions of innocents to sacrifice themselves in battle. Why? For one reason. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Zero day. The day that life on Earth ceases to exist is coming fast. It cannot be stopped. The hope of zero dawn is that something new might come after. But I will leave it to Elizabeth Sobek to shine that thin ray of light into the darkness. Harris, out. Life on Earth didn't cease to exist. He said it could not be stopped. But it was. Somehow... Somehow Elizabeth saved us. I've, I've got to keep looking. Find out how she did it. Two things. One, they hibernate if they run out of food. They will not shut down. Perhaps with enough time they would. Two, there is a possibility of a code that could take them out. It would only need, what, did he say half, half a century? 50 years? They, well, they've had a lot longer than that for something to calculate it. So, um, we're going to have to finish with what Elizabeth started. And, uh, use that code that a computer has been calculating in the meantime and shut them down for good because they are dormant okay well otherwise I believe that I have been I believe we can call this a hole in one so far so good the writing is beautiful the lines are beautifully written the characterization is strong he's an interesting character I like um, Harris a lot um, as a character he's really really interesting um, and like 
I don't know. It manages to be very, very, very well written in the way that you can usually get away with in prose where you don't have a narrator or somebody's voice. Um, they put it in dialogue, um, but it is not insufferable, which is kind of the risk of having people talk like that in real life. They pull it off very well. Um, yeah. I didn't realize they were going to be buying time to exterminate the swarm by calculating the, the, the codes. That I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take into consideration. Is this the way, that's the way forward, this is the way back. Sorry, I've got to take a look and see. But yeah, we do not have any alternative, they say. We do not have any alternative. Did my microphone get louder? Oh, 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 it did, it did. Okay, I've been fiddling with things. Well, I hope you can hear, I hope you can hear the, uh, the audio from the story bits because they're very, very good. Hold on, I wanna see what this is. What is this? This looks like another door of some sort. And I wonder what it is. Sorry, but the only way to zoom in and look at things is by pulling out my bow. So I pull out my bow. I'm really not sure what this what this is because these aren't just screens is that an elevator thing something I'm not sure I'm not sure what this is but I don't appear to be able to interact with it at all so that's too bad my curiosity will have to go uh 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 Oh man, when I was walking around for Halloween last night, there was a there was a, a somebody dressed as Barf from Spaceballs. I was impressed because A it was a very good costume and B that's not something you you see every day these days. So Yeah, well, Phil, the thing is though, I think that the reason why we're going with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and Spaceballs and chat here is I think that this is a very stressful and emotional situation that we're in in the game and you are all um, sharing a moment of levity to like you're all like kind of like laughing nervously through this to help tolerate the discomfort of anticipation so you are collectively doing yourselves and each other and me a favor with that <sighs> enter viewing room this is going to be is going to be I'm gonna do it I just wanted to see if there was anything else hidden I want all the story do you want me to knock at the story I want the story there's castrols what they got in through the vents oh, geez, oh, geez, oh, geez. let nothing stop you from learning the truth spread out if it moves kill it what is this place A tomb I'm gonna shoot some guys I'm gonna Snipe. Counselor guidelines. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> we'll go shoot some dudes after we've gotten their data points. <sighs> Alright. Sorry, Castrols. You're gonna have to wait. <laughs> oh, this one's got text. Er, got, oh, wait. A hologram data point. The bad news. Okay, no, that's the one that we just that's the one that we just saw. All right, let's do this. Lore first, drawing blood later. Yes, those are my priorities, Uber. <laughs> and if we have to fight them in the process, we will, but we're gonna get the story. Counselor guidelines one. Oh gosh. Oh goodness. Okay, all right. For debriefing after presentation one. Candidates, candidates must be allowed to ask questions 
and be given the necessary time to fully absorb the information they have received. It is important to be aware that candidates have just been exposed to triggers for severe mental and emotional trauma. Do not assume silence or outward calmness indicates acceptance. It is essential to stress that all other options for combating the Pharaoh plague and preserving the con continuation of human life have been considered and found unworkable. Communicate this fact calmly but clearly and firmly. Familiarize yourself with the data on the catastrophic environmental impact of nuclear engagements versus the swarm, addendum V1, and unfeasibility of maintaining life in orbital, lunar, or undersea structures, addenda C1, C2, C3, so that you can counter candidates' objections in depth. If a candidate asks for time alone to review supplementary information, allow this without hesitation. Be sure to inform security personnel so the candidate can be monitored for attempts at self-harm. Candidates should only be cleared to proceed to presentation two if you believe their mental state is sufficiently stable. Note that real-time support will be available via your focus. Security and medical te crisis teams are data corrupted, presumably standing by. There's something, I mean, it, it, there's something both pragmatic and compassionate running through this, you know? I mean, from a pragmatic standpoint, we can't have somebody working on a team who is having a breakdown or is going to break down in the middle of it if, as much as we can avoid it. Um, but also there's, there, is a, there is an understanding of humanity Real-time support will be available, I think, for you, too, as the counselor. And yes, calling it the Pharaoh Plague is very clever. Um, so here they're addressing the questions you're going to have. Well, why don't we just bomb them with nukes? Why don't we just wait them out? And no, those are not feasible. And we've done, we've done the research to back it up. Just the be sure to inform security personnel so the candidate can be monitored for some attempts at self-harm. Does this allow this without hesitation? Like, give them the time, give them the space, don't pressure them, let them let them have what they need, but also make sure that they don't harm themselves. Like, it's just, it's a lot. And this is Counselor Guidelines 1. I wonder what else we're going to find. I'm going to keep trying to snipe these and then I'm going to snipe the Kestrels. Okay, or fine. I guess I'm going to have to snipe the Kestrels because I'm not seeing anything else with my eyes. What was that voice? Thing. Okay, what has this guy got? Oh, he's got a big old thing that I probably don't want him to hit me with. There's this other guy. Oh, jeez. <sighs> oh, shoot! Out of the way, Aloy. Oh, oh, shoot! Destroy the unfaithful! Okay. Oh, jeez. We're too close to the tribal prim to stop us now. Shut up, did silence. Them, what did they contain? Tribal primitives. Who are you, Silence? Because everybody, every single living human in Aloy's contemporary civilization is a tribal primitive. Equally. <sighs> no room. Oh. I guess I should have 
maybe not bought all that stuff, but oh well. Now I've got their big old gun that I guess I could have shot them with. Yeah, I don't... Oh, that's a thing to climb up. Okay, well, we're gonna get stuff. And we're gonna... Get some data points. What are you? Interview Tom H. Molecular and Cellular Biology. Voice recording, candidate interview. Okay. Buckle up, folks. Oh. That is accurate, yes. So these mechanical monstrosities, they don't just kill people, they feed off them? Not just people, all organic matter. Every living thing dissolves into nutrients. Millennia of evolution liquefied. The miracle of life reduced to bloody biofuel. In a word, yes. Who did this? Pharaoh? That asshole. Is he here? No, doctor. Please, tell him Tom Pike wants a word. Now, get off! Get off! Uh, doctor, uh, please! You get Ted Pharaoh in here! Yeah. I mean, that's the long and short of it right there. I like that there's just silence afterwards. Yeah. Travis Tate, data security consultant. Oh, you can just play it here. Want to discuss? Oof. So Mama, she was right. Pardon? My mother, she took her Bible real serious. Not just Texas bubble serious, Pentecostal serious. Favorite chapter? Revelations. Now, I didn't always understand her on account of all that speaking in tongues and such, but when she did use her words, it was always end times this and leak of fire that on account of sinful lifestyles. Speaking of which, mind if I smoke? A tobacco cigarette. Sorry, darling. My taste run classic. Compliments your team tracked me down. Been a price on my head 18 months now. Sterling Malky was me, don't mind admitting. Been plenty of snakesters chasing the bounty, too. But I kept the zigging to their zag. How'd you finger me? I believe Dr. Sobek listed you as an alpha candidate. Priority snatch and grab. Always suspected she had a little thing for me. Hey, I don't suppose you got real coffee in this place. You know, blood coffee, conflict cappuccinos. Mr. Tate, I'm clearing you to proceed. Just go. We got a shadow runner right there. That's what that is. My goodness. Good old Southern boy, data security consultant, in quotes. Man. Yeah. That's an interesting character. That's an interesting character, too. Especially compared to here we have the scientist who's talking about, like, the, like, the beauty of, uh, of uh, the miracle of life, you know? And both of these are, are, are valid reactions. Well, I don't know if he means the coffee's got blood, but he's talking about, um... Talking about how coffee has led to wars, presumably. Which we've read about, actually, some of that. I believe Pharaoh... Actually, wasn't that Pharaoh's, um... The people who got into fights in the Pharaoh facility. I believe we're on either side of Coffee Wars. He is being an edgelord. 
Well, I'm not seeing any dropped frames on my end, so that must be on Twitch's end. I'm sorry. All right, let's listen to what Brad and Dak has to say, formerly of FAS. Oh. Who previously worked for Faro Automated Systems. On the chariot line self-replication routines? I came here thinking this was a rendition. When your people took me, I thought, about time. I've been trying to swallow the guilt every day since, since, uh... Would you like to take a moment? No, 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 I, I just, I really hoped Zero Dawn was a way to undo it all, my work, and I'm sorry to say I was ever proud of it, but Ted could really sell a concept, and, and, and in the labs, in the, the, the light of creation, that first test run, when, when you saw they understood their own structures, could rebuild themselves from memory and light, there were no limits. There were no limits. <sighs> he thought they had come to get the re retribution on him. Maybe at first, and then he thought that maybe he was going to be able to undo that. Yeah. Yeah. These are three very excellent, very different reactions, really, truly demonstrating a full range of human experiences and emotions, really. Yeah, no, they know what they're doing emotionally. No question. I hope this doesn't progress things. This looks like a side path. I want to get all the story bits and I want to go like the secret tunnel feels like that's not going to be progressing the story but it might be and I'm nervous about going through this door here but there's more data points that are showing up a whole lot of them that are showing up oh oh that's probably so I could sneak up on these guys if I wanted to Psh, gameplay All right, so this is gonna be another text one. No, a voice recording. Cap, cor is that corporate? Okilo, warfare, information warfare specialist, NAC. Captain, okay. I'm sure you now understand the urgency of why we brought you here, Ms. Okilo. Captain Okilo. Are you trying to thank me for not resisting? I believe we could negotiate a diplomatic solution. When it came to my country's lithium, it was always a swarm that would be sent to negotiate. Metallurgic International, US Robot Command. The markings changed, but the robots were the same. You have had considerable experience in human-robot conflict. Yes, and I've got the prosthetic limbs to show it. Yet I continue to face this horror, even though the challenge was great. Cyber warfare. I thought Zero Dawn would be a, a Manhattan project to generate the deactivation codes. With the resources I had, I estimated code breaking to be a hopeless endeavor. I was almost looking forward to being proved wrong. Unfortunately, your estimation was correct. As your General Hera said. So then. You did not bring me here to commiserate. What is left? What is her country? We come, we don't ask, we don't play nicely. 
Yeah, I know, but it's specifically her. It's specifically what what country? I wonder, um, or what region? Where where is she from? I wonder. Um, here's another voice recording one. Suzanne Alpert, environmental reclamation. Okay. Being with Suzanne Alpert, environmental scientist. Doctor. I'm sorry. I wasn't. Uh... Just stating your name. What were you thinking about, Doctor? Nothing the General said. Not really. I was on the Syzygy East Response Team in 2051, just after the second earthquake compromised the reactor. I still dream about it, after all these years. The red zone spreading on the imaging slowly, so slowly, like a hand opening its fingers. Your involvement in that event is why you were asked for by name. Really? That's interesting. Because nothing worked. Nothing could grow there again. It was a catastrophic failure. But the red zone is a blip compared to global scale biomass reduction. The biosphere and hydrosphere will collapse, render the Earth uninhabitable long before the robots finish us. Enduring victory can't buy time against that. So, you'd better show me what Zero Dawn really is. She's taking this pretty well, all things considered. Yeah. She's exactly the kind of candidate they're hoping that they'll get. Yeah. She's already, you know, she's already traumatized and she survived that trauma. So here's something that you can maybe actually do something with. Interesting. These are, these look like couches or something for resting on while something takes a look at you. From Ghana. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I think that these little side passageways must be for fighting the dudes. Yeah, that's all. Alas, there is no hidden data in the side passageways that I suppose I, I was supposed to uh supposed to sneak around in. My goodness. Oh need to make sure that I get all of the data points though. That's of absolute utmost importance. Oh, there's another data point. Oh, man. Ron Felder, Aerospace Engineering. Look, uh, let's cut the mystery. You're building a colony ship. It's obvious. And it's not gonna fly. I mean, literally. Remember the Odyssey? That multinational heap of space junk that's been in graveyard orbit since 57? That went nowhere real slow. And you have to get somewhere real fast. I, do you have any idea the immensity of the challenge to prep a new colony ship in time? To be clear, I'm not a worker on the project. Do you even understand how few people it could save? The whole generation ship concept is, is not gonna happen. It's the first thing you'd abandon in favor of embryonics. Uh, for that kind of storage we're talking, a lot of bulk, a lot of power, a lot of resources. So even if you do it, even if you build it and point it at Sirius X, there's no room for people on that thing, all right? If you could try to remain calm. But you people are crazy if you think you're getting off this rock. No one's getting off. Medical. Yeah, generation ships. They have to, uh, they have to think about that one, the limitations of that. Yeah, and that one, that's not even necessarily waiting it out in space. When he's talking about a generation ship heading somewhere else, he's talking about basically moving humanity to another place we haven't destroyed.
I'm not gonna lie, the uh, machine things they've got in these rooms are kind of uncomfortable looking. Oh, wait, am I going around in a circle? Maybe a little. Wait. Wait. Where is... Eh? That's gonna be through a door. The door that I'm supposed to progress to. There's another one. There was another one on here, I think. Wait, wait, wait. I don't think I'm supposed to have access to that one. Yet. I'm sorry, we're gonna do this out of order. Is that okay with you? I wonder if there's a way to get up there, actually, that I'm supposed to explore. Yeah, is that one that I'm supposed to have yet? I, I don't remember where I put my chat hat. I put it somewhere. Where did I put my chat hat? Oh, oh no, 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 no. When I ask a question like that, that's not telling me what to do. That's asking a yes or no question. And in that case, the yes or no question is, is there a way for me to get up there and get, like, is that a thing I'm supposed to have access to yet? And so the, the answer would be yes. And then I would look around and I would find it. Okay. I, I almost never want to be walked through exactly what to do about something, and if I do, I will make it super, super clear, and that's usually usually at the end of a lot of frustration. Um, so yeah. had forgotten the existence of the ladder, but I would I would have I would have found it looking around. Something else around here now. Oh. Aloy has to do something special here instead of just like haul hauling herself with no dignity over the side there. So they put um they put this pile of stuff right next to it here to uh once again try to help you be able, already. able to find it and i guess you can actually probably come up here and you can probably kill dudes from above that's probably another thing you're supposed to do instead of just stand there and bludgeon people with your uh with your spear but i bludgeon people with my spear so <laughs> all right let's listen to dr chuve Art, history, and museum studies, that's going to be about preserving humanity and history, I suppose, for the future. There is some mistake. I don't understand why it was brought here. Why would you show me these things? I know that there's already a lot to take in. In the waiting area, I was seated with a Nobel laureate in biophysics and a monk, I think. He spoke neither English nor Mandarin. It is very strange. And General Harris? What was he talking about? The robot swarm? The pharaoh plague? I understand it is terrible, but it really cannot be stopped. Why tell us this? There are people in Shanghai. My friends, my family, they have joined Operation Enduring Victory already. It is for nothing? We will all die? We're going to be able to answer some of these questions. I just want to know why I am here. It doesn't make sense to me. You were brought here because of your skill set. No, that can't be right. I am an art historian. I know Dutch masters, Japanese calligraphy, uh, Gerhard Richter. What does that matter now? We've got to preserve humanity, and that doesn't... We cannot preserve human life, but we can preserve some piece of human culture. That's a part of who we are. 
And of course, as always, maybe we can, maybe we can try to make it so that people don't do this again, that they don't repeat our past mistakes. Maybe there's a way to do this. Okay, well, we're just gonna... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes, no, the eclipse is definitely repeating past mistakes, that's for sure. Yeah, no, well, I'm sure that the metal flowers were all created by some of the people. I, the, the metal flowers, I am positive, and I can please do not confirm or deny if you've played through this game, but I am positive, I am positive, that the metal flowers are part of Zero Dawn. They are part of the pres preservation of tomorrow and so some of the people that they are recruiting those who are botanists will be working on that with people who are able to make the kind of robot things that are necessary to make that happen um i'm pretty sure of that <laughs> that's a good way of putting it dark puck <laughs> they're making completely new mistakes with similar consequences yes i suppose All right, well, I do believe that is everything that can be that can be found. There's nothing else that showed up. What is that? Emitter? Key component of a 20, mid 21st century military hollow lock. I guess that's going to be my problem soon. All right, well, I'm going to probably have to fight some goons. So uh, that's probably going to happen. All right, yeah, um, yes or no? Have I seen all of the things that there are to see here? I don't know where I put my chat hat. So yes, that is my chat hat, yes or no? Have I found all of the, all of the things that there are to find here? I'm gonna switch to my rock. Gotta have a rock. Rocks are hefty, handy, convenient, you just throw them throw them at a dude. Bam. I think I just I can't find anything else. There's nothing else that I that I that I bunker door, yes. There's just there's nothing else. Okay, thank you, Dark Park. Okay, excellent. Then I will proceed and we will see. But I do like that they show us a range of skill sets, a range of backgrounds, a range of reactions. Um, it's good. It gets at the scope of people who, like, the, the scope of the project, how it is, in a way, all of humanity coming together to do this. And also, it's not just STEM. CD02 data intact. Initiating playback. Elizabeth Sobek. You've heard the bad news, and it's all true. The Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn to create a super intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute the biosphere. An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. We call it Gaia. Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions of Gaia's mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Now these aren't AIs, but make no mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. 
And that's just the start. We don't have to build the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system is that it can build itself. Now, over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris talked about and build the transmission arrays to broadcast them, shutting down the feral robots for good. How Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisoned seas, to the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stalks, to rewilding the Earth with animal life. And then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings spawned at cradle facilities around the globe will partake of Apollo. The vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us, our world. And most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. It's not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia, we can give it a future. Join me and help make that future real. The whole earth destroyed, but then remade? Yes. By a machine. A machine of creation. Elizabeth did this. For life. For us. But... Why Hades, then? If it was part of Gaia, how'd it end up in the wreckage of a pharaoh robot? And why does it want to kill me? And... Apollo... The Archive of Knowledge, what happened to that? I'm as confused as you are. Maybe the answers lie ahead. I mean, something obviously went wrong. I don't know if what went wrong is just something that they didn't anticipate, or if there was a force that was perhaps that rogue AI that went that ran away into space, um, came back and messed with things, because. Hades, we saw Hades as one of those figures, of one of those 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 areas of um expertise. Because they definitely don't have that. And I wondered, I did wonder, you know, I mean it is very hard to convey something to people, but they, they could have they could have had something in place. Um they could have had um, a, a system to educate and, and to, to, to have it so that people were able to receive the information that they were given by the Apollo part of the progress. Um, but, uh, but like, something has gone wrong and Hades is clearly, if this, if it is in fact the same Hades that was part of Gaia. Um, I mean, what Hades, what Hades brings is corruption. Something has gone wrong and broken inside of it. And I wonder whether, because H Hades is the god of death. And so there's got to be something about, I don't know if that's a, a fail safe or something um, to prevent humanity from repeating this mistake or something like that. I do kind of wonder. Um, but I also wonder if it's been corrupted because there is that other, uh, that rogue AI that ran off into space um, and hasn't been um, hasn't been heard from since that we know of. Um, so we have um, 
We have the... The tall necks. And they are maintaining something. And Gaia is supposed to be able to communicate. I mean, things went wrong. Also, you'll notice that it said, uh, like, zero plus 375 years. Well, it's been a lot longer than 375 years. As I understand it, it's been, what, 900 years, did we decide? Um, and... I mean, humanity's been around for several hundred years. Um, the societies, um, the civilizations that we know have had some time to establish themselves. Um, but there's definitely things, things didn't quite work quite right. But at least now we know where the robots that we face come from. That that's from, because, because I can't help but anthropomorphize things because that's what humans do. Um, Gaia imagined them to help maintain things about the planet. But they are digging up resources and bringing those resources to the cauldrons. So the cauldrons, I think, may have originally been the underground facilities. No? Because, like, Mother's Cradle isn't a cauldron. And that's clearly one of the facilities where... So no, but at least we know that this has happened. Ostensibly, this has happened all around the planet, which um, which I wanted to... Um, I, I, I was wondering about. So now we know that at least in theory, this should have... This same process should have been repeated everywhere on Earth. Um, but um, I wonder... Um, The cauldrons are what Gaia used to build the robots that she needed. Something's gotten in there and messed things up, though. I think it might be this... The thing is, though, finding out about this rogue AI is something you have to... go digging for other... Like, n this is purely from a metal... from a meta level. Um... I because you could simply not know that that rogue AI exists it would feel a lot like the random embodiment of the concept of evil that shows up randomly at the end of Final Fantasy games um if you hadn't uh if you hadn't found those specific random little hidden in various places tidbits about that i mean we do know like i mean i liked that they had a guy here mention that um attempts to get into space because that is something that we encountered with random data points um but i, I don't could that rogue ai really be something so crucial that it's what messed up the zero dawn process hundreds of years after because yeah, so so Gaia makes so Gaia makes the cauldrons and can use the cauldrons to create. But something's gone wrong. Because we have the derangement, which is these these robots that were non-violent, just they were just there helping keep the planet going because of Gaia. I mean, there's the possibility that um, I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind. I'm just thinking through this some. There's the possibility that Gaia saw mankind trying to repeat the process, that Gaia saw the worst of humanity and concluded that um, they had to be stopped or controlled or something like that. Um, which is, I mean, frequently a, a, a problem when you have AI um, that have the ability to stop humanity. <laughs> um, I wonder, because Hades is trying to stop me, the clone of Elizabeth Sobek specifically, particularly, because either Hades is punishing me for the crime of having allowed so much death or something like that to happen, you know, because clearly, or I don't know, 
it's so, but it's also worth noting like they did say um and, and my brain is just gonna tuck this away and it's probably this is like total mini golf way the hell out there um so we have a guy who talks about why you can't do generation ships because the number of people that you could preserve and the amount of resources it would take to preserve those people um, is just ridiculous and it wouldn't be enough to like actually sustain a, a, a humanity. Um, but I feel like, and here, take your, t if, um, if you're not already in the stream spoilers channel on the Discord, please, 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 please put your speculation there. That is exactly the place to go where you can yell together you can you can swap theories together those of you who are very familiar with the game uh do try to spoiler tag things if there's going to be some folks in there who want to join who don't know the answers um or if you want to hang out and stream chat i don't know just be careful um yes and chrono is a mod and he can help he can help give you access to that oh and, and Amphi is here too yeah so so we're good um but i just i wonder whether they did try to preserve because there's clearly some sort of a fail safe or else Gaia realized that... I'm sorry, I'm going to use she. Um, uh, I wonder if Gaia realized that she needed help and so she called on her mother, Elizabeth Sobek, and brought Aloy to us. Um, okay, well, if... if, if uh, do we need to have another... <laughs> Do we need to have like a spoiler chat, not spoiler chat, separate room? Because <laughs> we can have another room. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't want those of you who are screaming and stream spoilers to not be able to talk freely about things either. But I feel like there should maybe be a place, especially with something that has as much detailed lore and prediction and guesses and things. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what the solution to that would be, but if somebody has a thought, please let me know. My brain is currently in overdrive trying to think about what's going on in this game. But I, I do wonder, I do wonder whether they pres did preserve some people. I don't know. Uh. Um, stream chat might be a good place to put it actually yeah if you spoiler tag anything about this in stream chat and just say like Horizon Zero Dawn spoilers were like that Lauren hasn't seen and then folks can decide for themselves if they want to look at those or not um yeah the stream chat um channel in discord I'm sorry folks <laughs> oh man okay yeah we could we could do that we could do that or somebody could make a could make a thread and and just spoiler spoiler tag things in that thread and be like this is where the folks who haven't beaten the game can throw their thoughts down um i don't know how to i don't know how to how to thread very well on discord but but feel free to to do that um and if anybody who is watching this on youtube by the way um after the fact wants to jump in you can do so um all right all right so i have a bunch of completely random and unhinged ideas and guesses and things um but most likely a lot of this is going to come together in this place here um so there's because it, it'll take a little time to settle and or need a little bit of additional information um but chances are my guess is that while we are here we're going to get some of this confirmed um all right i do believe that is everything and the kestrels are going to be here getting in trouble so we're probably going to fight more of them at some point i'm going to i'm going to prove i'm going to move onward and try not to uh, try not to die. I don't think there's anything else here. I'm surprised though because there's this right here, and it seems like, I mean, like we've seen bodies that look like they're preserved with stuff, and there's just there's just there's this stuff. I I don't know. I don't know. I guess I guess we'll see. I just thought that Zero Dawn had had a, the the covering things like calcification. I don't know if that's the right substance or word or whatever but I, I thought that there was going to be components of that and it seems like there might not be because they're talking about the inevitable so I don't know maybe that's not even a thing maybe Zero Dawn itself is not actually doing anything that could be considered terrible maybe the only bad thing about Zero Dawn is that they are withholding information um, and withholding that there is no hope and there would definitely be people who would say there is no point in doing that because we're all going to die. Which I think is very interesting. Let's open this door. Oh look, there's more data points. A whole lot of them. 
Oh, man. Processing. Now we are in central projects. Oh, what is this going to be? Make your selection. Oof. Text log. Make your selection. Oh, I missed one. Oh, shoot. I missed one. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. Either that or it's in this room. We'll find out. All right. Well, we'll see if it's in this room. Make your selection. Text data points. Text log. You are now in possession of information regarding the true nature and purpose of Project Zero Dawn, classified far above top secret. As such, we regret that you cannot be allowed to leave this facility. There are three options available to you at this point. Please consider each carefully. Trained counselors are standing by to assist you in making your choice. 1. Participation you will be assigned to a sub-project team based on your area of expertise. You should be aware that the way forward will be difficult and the project's outcome is uncertain. You will be expected to work a minimum of 80 hours per week and your communications with family members will be strictly limited and monitored in real time. Upon successful completion of the project, you and your immediate family, or two persons of your choosing, will be transferred to the Elysium Sealed Habitat to live out the remainder of your natural lives. Two, indefinite detention. Should you choose to decline participation in Project Zero Dawn, you will be confined indefinitely. You will be given 48 hours to reconsider after which your decision to refuse participation will be considered irrevocable. Every reasonable effort will be made to make your term of confinement as comfortable as possible, but you will not be permitted contact with the outside world and death within 18 months due to the Pharaoh Plague is inevitable. When the Zero Dawn facility is abandoned, detainees who wish not to opt for medical euthanasia will be released. Then three is going to be medical euthanasia. The information you have just received understandably calls into question the purpose of continuing to live. If you would prefer to end your life at this point, pain-free medical euthanasia is available. A 48-hour waiting period is required, during which time you may instead opt for participation or confinement. Please notify a counselor when you are ready to make your choice, or if you have further questions. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, this entire thing has been constructed with a, a, a notable combination of compassion and pragmatism. Because pragmatically, they want to have as many people on the team as they can. They want to have the skills that they can possibly have. They want people to be as, as prepared as possible to do this. Um, but also they understand We're going to hear people making these decisions, aren't we? I might put a content warning on this. We'll see. Um, I will say, and I assume because we all kind of saw where this was going based on that, we all kind of know where the main story of this is going, um, that if you are here, um, it is because you, you are, you have judged that you are in a state of mind where being in, like, hearing that what is happening in this game um, and the potential voice acting of what might happen um, and reading about this is something that you're able to to uh, to to weather. Um, if this is a little too heavy for you, please, please do not feel like this is a bad uh, that it is a bad thing to bow out. Um, so right now, I wanted to encourage you if you're thinking this might be a little too heavy, um, err on the side of taking care of yourself. Um, maybe you want to watch the video later if you want to keep up with what happens and you want to have the power to hit the pause button, maybe watch it during daytime. Um, you're, you're welcome to, uh, you're welcome to do that or, or to step away and you can come back during another stream and, uh, and it will be less intense and vivid. Um, or you can choose to, uh, to, to but basically this is me saying like, it might get heavier from here. I don't think it's going to go where it, 
a story could choose to go. Um, but I think it's going to be heavy. Um, and we are having people um, calling into question the purpose of continuing to live. I don't want this to be hurtful to anyone who is watching. Streaming is fun. Um, games are fun. Some of us play video games and watch streams and things to get away from things that are hard. Um, so, so this is me, this is basically me, me stalling, buying a little bit of time for you to make the decision for you. If you, if you think it would be best for you to walk away, please, please, please take care of yourselves, okay? I, I don't want anyone to, uh, to be in, like, a state of, of emotional distress because a story has put them there. Um, it's perfectly understandable, normal, and human to be affected by stories. That's, that's why we engage with stories. Um, but, but sometimes they can be a bit much. So, uh, so if you need to step away, um, I, I think, I think now, like, I've, maybe I've given enough of the warning if you want to do that, um, that you've had a chance to do so. Everybody else, are we all right proceeding, knowing that this is dark and there is probably going to be some heavier content here. Um, and we may be engaging with people who are, um, going to choose option three, for example. Um. Are we, are we all right? Um, like, please, uh, please do what is best for you. And you don't, you don't all have to answer. This doesn't have to be everybody you're not on the spot, but just, just making sure that everybody's had the opportunity to consider that. Because I don't want any of you getting hurt. So, okay. Okay. Also, if somebody else, if there, if there is anyone here who wants to, uh, who, who knowing how bad it's going to get will make it so they can tolerate it or who wants to ask somebody like, um, is this thing, like, is it going to go beyond this? Um, you can always try like asking if somebody on the discord is, who knows this game, um, and, like in stream chat is willing to answer that question or give you like that little bit of information. Um, so you can make that decision. Cause I know sometimes knowing what's coming can make it easier to, to, to hold. So. Yeah, that first bunker. I mean, the first bunker does start off with uh, the medical euthanasia. So you know, right off the bat, even without the context, you know what's, um, you know kind of what you're getting into to a certain degree, if that makes sense. Um, God, look, you can see there's the three buttons right there. Um, oh, look, there's one on the floor. Let's take a look at this. Okay, counselor guidelines two. Oof. Okay, and this is the one. Okay, so I didn't miss one. So this is going to be the companion to counselor guidelines one that we looked at earlier. Here goes. For debriefing after presentation two. It is vitally important that candidates choose to participate in Project Zero Dawn voluntarily and knowingly without additional coercion and without value judgment on the part of the counselor. Confirm for candidates that they were selected due to their skill sets and accomplishments. Emphasize that their dedicated participation in Zero Dawn will increase the project's chance of success. Frame participation in Zero Dawn as an opportunity to respond actively in the face of an overwhelming threat. Candidates may question the fairness of their selection. Validate such subjections as normal, even admirable responses. Emphasize the value of candidates' ex expertise to the future, not just of humanity, but to de terrestrial life as a whole. Likewise, candidates may balk at the morality of extending their lifespans and those of loved ones beyond zero day. Validate their hesitation. Acknowledge that while the reward of Elysium is not fair, it will be earned. If possible, redirect their ethical misgivings towards greater commitment to the project. When candidates challenge the plausibility of Project Zero Dawn, permit them to review Dr. Sobek's presentation as many times as they wish and allow access to supplemental articles G01 through P20. Allow them to suspend the interview to fully process this documentation. A significant minority of candidates will elect for medical euthanasia. It is important to receive this decision kindly and without judgment. Advise them of the 48-hour waiting period during which counselors will be available to discuss their decision. 
emphasize that euthanasia will not occur without repeated consent when the procedure is scheduled to take place. No one will be euthanized against his or her will. Candidates, candidates who elect indefinite detention must be informed that they have 48 hours to reverse that decision, after which the decision is final. Okay, so I was confused about Elysium a little bit because it said you'll live out the rest of your natural life and I I just assumed that was the 18 months. But no, there is, there is one small place where humanity will be able to continue living while the world around them ends. That is interesting. I don't know what that means or what that looks like. I have some concerns. I mean, one can talk about the morality of extending your lifespans and the people you love. God, can you imagine having to make the decision of who of the people you love come with you and everybody else dies? Um, I mean, everything involved here is, is a terrible, terrible, terrible choice. And I don't think any of us could know what we would, what we would choose if we weren't there. Um, but I wonder kind of how long Elysium lasts or lasted. I wonder if Elysium actually exists or if Elysium is something else. I wonder if Elysium still exists in Aloy's time. If so, what that would mean, what it would be like, where it would be, if it's in space. I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. I know we will. Yeah. God, this is a this is a rough one. But I mean, we knew again, they let you know very early in the game what you're getting into. All right. To Brad Andak. Decision interview formerly of FAS. Oops, wrong button. Oh god. Let's see what he chose. Of course I'll do it. To be given the opportunity to rebuild what I, I the, the, the damage that I, well, I, I don't feel worthy of it, but, but I, I will do it, absolutely. I want to stress that this was never about your culpability. Uh, it, it is to me. Dr. Sobek, Margo, they were smart to get out of Pharaoh when they did, but, but not one of us took it as a warning sign. It just told ourselves they weren't cut out for the BTRI cabals. That's uh, the better than rapid innovation. Uh, a better at competing, better than the next guy, a, a better killing machine. Uh, it's just amazing how a century and a half of science fiction did nothing to swerve our species from the path of doom. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that life. I mean, I, I will work hard, twice as hard to earn this for, for my family to have a place in Elysium. I never thought I that there could be uh, atonement. Yeah, this is the first time that I recall hearing the name Margo. I am very curious about who Margo is. Because that's not a name that's dropped by accident. That's someone we're going to know about. And yes, the Torment Nexus, that is absolutely what we've got going on here. For anyone who is not familiar, uh, that that's a there's a, a joke on the internet about how science fiction will be like, don't do this thing, and then people will be like, man, that thing sounds really cool. We made it. And the thing is that called the Torment Nexus, which sounds like a thing you should probably not build. All right, let's do more of these, shall we? Suzanne, oh, okay, let's see what she says. If you're still nauseous, no. The inhibitors have kicked in. I can't feel the back of my tongue. I wish I could tell you I'd believe in this. But the damage is too great, too extensive, too complete. With all respect to Dr. Sobek's work at Miriam, no. No. Life doesn't always find a way to keep going. Sometimes it never comes back. Like Syzygy East. Like the Congo. Like Timor. Like us. That's our reward? A buried city full of terminal patients waiting out the clock? You grow old together with your loved ones. 
in safety. I don't have loved ones. I suppose I could start a family? I'm afraid not. All inhabitants of Elysium will be medically sterilized. <laughs> a habitat capable of sustaining a starting base of 2,000 individuals for up to 100 years is a huge challenge, Dr. Alpert. If the population grows instead of diminishes, everyone will be dead inside 30 years. I knew it. I just couldn't bring myself to say the words. I'm sorry. Finish it. Medical euthanasia. I want no part of this. I just want it over. I see. Protocols require a 48-hour waiting period, after which... It's interesting because you can't predict who is going to respond in what way. We might have thought, ah, this woman has, has knowledge that is, that, is, that is the most relevant to what they'll be doing. Surely she'll see that she could make a difference and she'll definitely join. And this, this other, this, this fellow over here, he's so racked with guilt. There's no way he'll be able to, to you know, there's no way he'll be able to, to withstand the, the, the emotional trauma of all of this. Um, and yet it's actually, I mean, it seems perfectly in character. It's perfectly believable, understandable human reactions to things. Like both of these responses make perfect sense for people. Um, but it's interesting because it's not necessarily what you would expect. It's not the easy answer. It's not, well, there's the man who's racked with guilt and then he can't handle it. And there's the woman who's the expert and she steps up to save the day. Yeah, the woman who should know if it can be done or not says it can't be done. And she's, she's horrified by everything that they're doing. She's horrified by Elysium. It's, it's interesting. Let's see what this one says. The aerospace engineer. Okay, let's see what he has to say. Is he to make sure I behave this time? <laughs> Security, for your protection. Would you like to discuss how you're feeling? Sure. I'll tell you. Surprised. No, flabbergasted. Like my old man would say, flabbergasted. That vein pumping in his forehead. I thought... I thought you people were just completely underprepared for a space flight project. But now I can see it's worse. Much worse. Sobek is a total fantasist, a, a dangerous fantasist. He's kind of blue skying. It's. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry we wasted each other's time. I'm ready to leave now. I'm afraid that's not possible. <laughs> Everything you're talking about here isn't possible. I recommend you read the documents regarding your options. I've seen enough. I'm getting out of here. Oh, what are you... You know, uh, get your hands off me! Yeah. Okay. I, uh... Presumably he's Alert. medical way inaccessible. Stranded shackles? This is strange looking. Because everything else is covered. In, I don't know. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to look it up. Okay, now I know here's all of the interviews that we've seen. So giving us individual people whose stories we can know and follow is a very good way of getting us invested in this. Stranded shackles. This mysterious item is valuable only to the most curious merchants. Shackles made from an unknown smooth material. I will find somebody who wants this. Strange. I really don't know what to make of that. I have not found anything else like that. 
I don't know if that means that I've done something wrong or overlooked things. But, uh... Medical wing inaccessible, huh? That's going to be a hard... Hard thing to visit. Eh? Oh, shoot! I didn't want to do that, did I? Uh... I'm fine. Well, that's interesting. I'm not quite sure what this was. The Aloy doesn't want to just walk through it, so you have to dive. I know that there's more stories that we haven't gotten. What is that? Is that the... Okay, that's the, the gun. Go to central projects. I feel like I should there should be more there's a few more stories that we haven't heard yet. But I'm not seeing any more data points in this vicinity. I want to fling myself through that other thing again. Oh, am I about to fight Never a boss? when I might need these. Cool. Um, I'm gonna go dive back through the inaccessible thing. I think that was through here. Was it through here? Okay, so here's where I got the shackles just strange. This whole area is strange to see me. Alright, there's nothing else here. Okay. And this has... I don't know. This is the exact same... Whatever this thing is, it's the same as the other one that I was confused by. But what's through here? What... Is this... I don't know, because it looks like there's a bed going down. I don't know what this is. If this is a prison, I guess the shackles are here, or what? The map doesn't say anything about what that room is. Okay, well, vault around through here. All right, folks, I ask you once again, chat hat, yes or no, have I missed anything? I think some information was passed on because there wasn't, there was a version of information given to people. So I don't think that they removed the knowledge. I think something might have gotten corrupted along the way or someone or something might have destroyed it to some degree. Um. Gonna look and see. Supply crate, so there's going to be something important over there. Bunker door. Seal integrity maintained. It's going to give me a hard time. Oh, there's... Intruder! Get her! Whatever you do, don't die now. Don't really want to. Really not anticipating dying. Where are they? Are you going to come here? Boys? What can I do? What what kind of weapons have what weapons have I got equipped? No, that's the wrong button. Uh no. Oh, what's the button? 
Sorry, it's going to be a bit, a bit loud. There is something significant about the fact that they, they built Sunfall here, you know, like they were told to. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to listen to this one. All right, folks, because we're in here doing this and then we'll go fight those guys. You ready? We're going to listen to this. I'm going to. See how this goes. Oh, Tom, this is the guy who wanted to beat up Pharaoh. Oops. I hashed it out with them, what the point of Artemis was. I made it clear I wasn't on board for a global zoo. We haven't exactly proved ourselves to be great custodians in the past few thousand years. So the idea of a reconstituted biosphere, well, it's horrifying, isn't it? A complete horror show. We have no right to take a best guess at this stuff. But the alternative? Nothingness. For there to have been all this and then nothing. And with Charles Ronson running the show, I respect him. He's got a passion to him. He's hot-blooded. So I said I'll do it. I'll put my all into this, literally. When the project is done, I'll take the medical option, thank you. Counselor said I might change my mind. I told him that he didn't know me very well then. For life's sake, I'll do the dirty work. But I want no part of this pathetic, attenuated future on offer. I'm an outdoors man. Never did like the feel of solid state lighting on my skin. And... A wee bit of a claustrophobe, anyway. All right, so when they're talking about the attenuated future, I think that's the, uh... We're taking our best guess. We're going to try to see if we can make it so that... So that the world can, can, can work. He's a likable fellow. He's a likable, sympathetic fellow. I like that part of why he does it, why he agrees to do it, is uh is because he trusts the person in charge of his, of this department and he wants to do what's right for people or for not for people but for uh he wants to do what's what's right for life on earth how oh this is how i switch weapons I hope I don't knock this into myself. Nope, that didn't work. Not this one. And that guy is, is hiding behind a thing. That didn't set them on fire, did it? I was kind of hoping it might. Let's try again. That did not work either. All right, what can I do here? Uh, what if I try to not be seen by them? Surely. Yeah, you are. There we go, there's one down. Okay. Okay, hold on, sorry. I 
wonder if I can like sneak through here actually. Okay. I could. Aloy despite the Nora. Yeah. I like that. He's almost down, just one more, one more arrow. There, he's down, he's down. Okay, we're good? That took care of that. I guess I could have just taken the gun. Was the gun just hanging out here? Could I have just taken that gun earlier? Did they leave this gun? I guess maybe they did. Well, I shot him in the face with an arrow, so that did not end well for him. Oh, he dropped it. Okay. Well, I'm glad he didn't hit me in the face with that. That would have been pretty bad for me. Not gonna lie. I don't think I would have liked that very much. All right. Anyway, before we were so rudely interrupted, somewhere around here there's uh, more data points. Music's awfully intense. Oh, okay, yeah, but this is just the I'm exploring a thing intense. Search the shadow heavy. Oh. Tower's down. Is there another route? I've done this before. Just need my focus. Aloy's gonna. All right. All right. Let us get some. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. I guess I should probably make some more arrows, huh? All right, let's get some more story, shall we? Now, those lame FBI black hats at Mockingbird back in the day, I enjoyed schooling them. But maybe I went in too hard on this poor counselor. She was cute and just going down a checklist after all. Couldn't expect her to see how ridiculous Zero D's ambitions are. God's own budget thrown at a kid playing with a hologram sculptor. Palms up, honey. I'm just calling it like it is. Hey, look, Mom, I'm making nature. Now, if nature is so important, why not let nature take its course? Extinction? That's natural. Zero dawn? No, oh, ma'am, that ain't. Heck, it's so unnatural, it'd be called an abomination back home, and you know it. That's why you're hiding it. Meanwhile, my little honey of a counselor, she's munching the inside of her cheek. Bad habit. She chewed one of her nails, too, just one. Not your day was it, little sweet pea. Saw her quota slipping away. Said, I assume you intend to decline the assignment, Mr. Tate. <laughs> you kidding me? 18 months hard labor in exchange for 30 years lounging around Elysium watching porn? <laughs> Sign me up. Yeah. Yeah, he is pretty awful. Okay. Wow. All right, buddy. What did he do? That's true, he's not Ted Farrow, that's true. That's true, there's only room for one. Only room for one, Mr. Farrow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got quite a, quite a team going here. 
All right, let's see what our uh, art history. Zero dawn. It is art in a way, an expression on the grandest scale. But there is so much unfairness. Why was I chosen? Was it decided by committee, by algorithm? My family will be saved because I happen to graduate in art history? Is this right? Dr. Souvé? Christina Souvé? Yes. I met a man, another historian. His fields are Bauhaus and the new materialists. But he once attended one of my talks. Another unfair chance. Of all the many people in the auditorium, that we should both be here now. And yet, I feel more accepting of my fate. No, it is not fair, not at all. But for the sake of my family, for the sake of art, art is alive. It must be able to speak from beyond history and echo in the future, not perish into oblivion. This opportunity, I must do this. But where did it all go? You know? Where did it all go? Something went wrong. Elysium makes me a bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. I mean, it could be as simple as they, you know, were terribly, terribly ambitious and hoping that it would work. And it turns out that they overestimated what they could do. Maybe they ran out of time. Maybe something glitched in Gaia and prevented her from sharing some of what she was supposed to share. Maybe the data got corrupted because we can see that data gets corrupted. Um, Maybe there was sabotage within the team. Maybe there was sabotage without. Maybe there was sabotage related to Elysium. Um, there are so many things. So many things that could. Oh, that's where I'm supposed to go. Right, because the store is not power charged. Um. Well, the ones who the ones who decided to work for the team had logs about their process because I'm sure that they were told to record everything because that's, I mean, if you'll remember our first bunker, um, they're recording everything for posterity. Um, that's what um, that's what they've been asked to do by their director. Um, whereas the others, the ones that that say no, that is their their log of saying no. Okay, I'm going to have to fight some more stuff, presumably. Um. But yeah, thus far we have not seen anyone or anything. I mean, Hades... <sighs> the God of Death. Like, did we have an Ares? Did we have a God of War? Is there something we needed to do for warfare? Um. Interesting, Artemis is the... Here we go. Artemis is is a need to find the right configuration. Animals. All right. Let's take a look at this one right here. Oh, I guess that's true. Wait, there's a question mark. What is that? Errors detected. Settings transposed. Okay. So it's flipped upside down, so we have to figure out what to do from there. But first we're gonna listen to this. Hey, I'm done with Brett's incompetence, okay? Somehow, he managed to install an H emitter node backwards. Everything's in reverse. I don't get paid to clean up Brett's messes. If you want it fixed, send him up to storage for a new emitter, not me. Parker out. Hey, I'm done with Brett's incompetence, okay? All right. I'm curious, actually, if you don't mind. I, uh... Oh, does this mean I missed one? Maybe I did. Maybe I did miss one. That's not so good. I'm trying to remember 
if Brett was the guy that was at Pharaoh. No. Oh, jeez. Okay. Hold on, sorry. No. No. No, that's the medical folks. Okay. Sorry. Okay, no, no, that, that's Mike. Okay. I wanted to double check. It's interesting they give names to these people who'll never show up again. There is something, uh, something humanizing about that. All right. Part missing. I had it upside down. Maybe there's a storage area nearby. All right. I just, I was wondering if the texts maybe were connected to each other in some way, which would have been kind of funny. Okay, what does this one say? Okay, so these ones, but this other one is a challenge. I just, I wonder if like, okay, that one should be up. And then left, down, right. Wait. Right? Yeah, left, down, right. Done. I should check the door nearby. So I've got multiple multiple options what is what is what is what are my two goals here this restore power to the door or question mark what's the question mark of two here I don't understand I just don't want to miss anything here. So I'm gonna, just gonna throw myself into the hallways. You know how it goes. There's some guns. What am I supposed to, I guess I could just go shoot the door. That is a, that is a solution I could choose. All right, okay, so it looks like I'm gonna to have to do multiple pieces of things down here. All right, okay. So we're in here. We're gonna go here. And then. And then. This is missing a piece, but I don't have that piece. But where do I find that piece? Hollow lock interface unavailable. But where's the missing hollow lock piece? Oh, that door is open now. Oh, never mind. I can't go through there. There's something in the way. Okay. But I can go through here. Okay. I hope I'm not gonna regret this. 
I don't want to like accidentally progress, but I think that this is me solving the problem, like solving the puzzle, you know? Like, I think this is what I have to do. To figure it out. Okay. Oh. Emitter. Oh. Oh, that's that thing that I found that I said I thought was going to be... That's going to be my problem soon, I said. Well, here it is. It's my problem. Let's make sure nobody's going to, like, show up and just shoot me. There's a supply crate. There's another supply crate. Let's, like, go see what's going on over here. Oh, hold on. I want to do this. Okay, there's gonna be something. I can't spare the weight. There's gonna be something here. There's gonna be a data point that I can only see because I'm here, maybe? Or something? I mean, maybe that's just stuff, but usually they have the stuff here to try to uh, get you to look at something, to draw your attention to something that you might not otherwise have noticed. Uh, let's see. What do we think? Let's go here. This looks important. We'll take this. Found one. Looks intact. I need to get another power cell. I need another power cell so that I can get my Mewtwo armor. Although I might not need my Mewtwo armor by the time. That's the one thing if it takes like an entire game to get the super stuff. <sighs> Are those my footsteps? Those gotta be my my footsteps. Yeah. The Mewtwo armor may be too good. But only usable for like five seconds. The very, very end of the game or something. Okay. That should do the trick. Alright. Cool. Let's get that door open. So the first one should be down. Then the next one should be left. And then up. Oh wait, no, no, I was already up. And then right and then down. I think I can do this. That did it. Door should have power. Sweet. Now to see what lies beyond it. Shut up, silence. Like, I just... I don't think he's quite what he seems, and I don't know what he is. I don't... Maybe he's, like, secretly from, like, the descendants of Elysium, you know? And he's been trying to get back down here to get stuff so he can get power over the human race or the world or whatever. Um... I hope not. I I wouldn't I don't know that I would like that. Um but I don't know what else his motivation would be and the fact that he is so dismissive of these people. I mean it could just be that he's like, well I'm more civilized than them. But I'm like, yeah, but but where where are you more civilized from? You know? When people hate the Karja, it's not because the Karja are are like backwards tribal weirdos. People hate the Karja because they are killers who have waged war on lots of people and they're snooty and think they know better than everyone else. Um, but Silence, the way he looks down his nose at them indicates that he is from outside of their time and place feeling like that's my, that's the impression I get anyway. Um, all right. So brief chat hat. Um, have I missed anything here? I'm not seeing anything but that doesn't mean that it's hasn't happened I mean he might be somebody who wants to be what I'm describing but it's just it's a very strange way for him to be talking um, if he is in fact 
of these people. Because he, I mean, I guess if he's read enough about another time and place, then he knows that there could be another time and place that was different. But like, Aloy, when Aloy complains about civilization in the time and place where she lives, she has a way of doing it that is both scornful of the problems and also grounded in the reality of the world and the time and the place and her experiences even with a focus. And she's also a genius. So, ah, hello. This is great. Eclipse, they're here. Yep. Avoid contact. Lines look good. Gaia, it's up there. Second floor. Can you reach it? So much for avoiding contact. I think I'm going to set them on fire. This isn't good. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, we're just gonna just do this. Okay, that guy's dead. Shoot, I'm on fire. I don't like that. Let's try not being on fire. My wise decision here is to not be on fire. Get ready. Okay. Now what? Oh, there's more. Okay, cool. Great. Nope. Nothing to see here. Thing to see here. Um, I'm gonna make more of these and I'm gonna maybe drop some bombs. Okay. Oh shoot. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. You cannot. You gonna come here, buddy? Okay, that guy's dead. That guy's dead. Okay, all right, um, hold on. Uh, okay, I should have known that was coming, and uh, Jeez, oh jeez. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. They're on 
fire and I'm gonna shoot them. Oops, I missed you. Oops. Let's try not to die here. Oh, shoot. Is this gonna are they gonna keep coming? No. Okay, good. I guess I could have grabbed one of their guns and shot them with it, but I didn't. Yeah, Aloy is not the biggest fan of Mr. Silence. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. We got some stuff. We got some important looking things, some dead goons. We can go through there. All right, oh, look at that. They gave me some healing items. That's very nice of them. All right, although I should perhaps have used can't carry more health potion or two so that I would have some of my medicine left. That's okay. Okay. Right. We're just gonna get this. Let's see, where are we? What is going on? These will keep. Okay. So that's where we're trying to go. So this door is not where we're trying to go. So what, what does it go? What does it do? Where is this? Oh, it's a way back here in, oh, that's where I came from, okay. All right. Silence would be a terrible stream viewer. I would I would not be very fond of him. I would I would have to tell him to, to knock it off. I would tell him that I'm glad that he enjoys the game and he's very passionate about it and I, I can tell that he knows a lot, but I'm trying to experience it for myself and he would be all blur, I'm silence. And I would be like Grr, silence. Stalactites, you see, because they're on the ceiling. I guess I'm gonna have to figure out how to get up there. That is, in fact, what I have been tasked with doing. So I wonder if Hades wants to get to Gaia. The only way to get into Gaia is by having Elizabeth. Oh, there's stuff in here. Oh, there's stuff in here. Okay, well, we're gonna go get some more story stuff. That is scary looking. All right, let's get, so oh. <clears throat> I'm serious, I'm good at this. Let's get some more data, shall we? What do we got here? Simulation results. Text mail from Margo Shen. Okay, so Margo is here. I guess we'll get to know Margo now. From Margot Shen to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, simulation results. Wow, you weren't kidding about Gaia's predilection for animal morphologies. Sure, not totally unexpected given the rough natural terrain her bots will have to navigate, but I agree that there's something deeper going on here. Her designs aren't just functional. They feel almost like, well, tributes is the word that comes to mind. As though she's already mourning their loss. And not just for the disappearing fauna of our time, but creatures from the fossil record, too. References to megafauna in some of her designs. So cool. Well, whatever Gaia thinks up, Hephaestus will empower her to build it. I just wish we could still be around in a century or two to see what she makes. <sighs> okay, so they did not... Because it did seem kind of strange. Like, why, why are the robots animals? because Gaia has chosen to do so. And and so they are choosing, they are reading this like it's a tribute, like this is her mourning their, their loss. Uh, but, but they don't know exactly what her motivation is, if, if she has, can be said to have motivation, you know? Like, I, I don't know. 
I'm really, I'm really curious about this. Um, because even building the AI. Hello, I'm Margot Shen, and this is Hephaestus. As the name might tip you off, this is going to be the subordinate function that Gaia will use to make lots and lots of robots. Her personal forge, except it's not that simple. Um, so like, you probably noticed that only about a third of you are robotics engineers. The rest, experts in machine cognition, virtual heuristics, that stuff. Well, that's because we aren't going to be the ones designing and building robots. The last thing we want is to burden Gaia with a bunch of outmoded 21st century designs. Waste of time. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots. And not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose, designed and fabricated at a snap of a finger. Hers. Her finger. So, Hephaestus isn't really the forge. It's more like the knowledge of craft and ingenuity of a master smith to wield the hammer. Encoded as software. Virtual creativity made real. Gaia's already learning. In simulations, she's doing some very creative things with fractal assembly and animal morphologies. Her designs aren't about to win the Liam Prize anytime soon. But hey, everyone has to start somewhere. So... Yes. Time to get started. Let's do this. I don't get it. Oh, I like her. Which part? It's a little technical at places. Shut up. If Gaia was designed to save life, why would the robots it makes attack people? Perhaps it loves some forms of life more than others. A derangement. The machines weren't always so angry. True. Mostly they were docile until 10, 15 years ago. For years, Hephaestus has been forcing cauldrons to make aggressive machines. I've seen it myself, in the cauldrons. Stalkers, ravagers, a thunderjaw. How could it do that? And why? Why indeed? Because Gaia has been corrupted. Because something's gone wrong. Although, like... So artificial intelligence, so they have asked the question of the ghost in the machine, basically. They have, they've asked the question of, like, do... Um, do artificial intelligences have sapience? Um, that is um, that is a question. Remember our chocolate box, um, and uh, and so I wonder if we are going to dig into that here because we kind of have to. The issues with the Karja, the modern like or her contemporary societies issues are largely resolved the big issues we're going to have to face then will no longer be about the eclipse it'll have to be about the ai um and having the ai like be 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 people i think is going to be necessary to have antagonists for the second part of the uh the second part of of the story that i think we're getting into here let's see we'll steam ahead from elizabeth sobeck text mail let's see what she has to say i do really like um i do really like the uh, the girl in charge of Hephaestus. all right hi isabella all right i'm gonna read this one out loud from elizabeth sobek to margot shen subject full steam ahead margot if i doubted your brilliance in the slightest i wouldn't have picked you as the Hephaestus alpha you need to stop worrying about your age and communication style. You are who you are. Have confidence in yourself. You know what you're doing. Case in point, the latest draft of your plan for the construction and stocking of bootstrap silos to store raw materials is excellent. This combined with your design for the AM Foundry Core and the Foundry Site Selection Plan add up to a comprehensive plan. It's time to start construction. One detail. Consult with oh Okilo, we did not um, we did not hear from her before you finalize the silo inventories. Hephaestus's first task will be to fabricate the robots that will construct the waveform broadcast towers Minerva will use to transmit the deactivation codes. So any exotic materials needed for the towers should be accounted for in the inventory plan. The first things that's go the first things that are going to be made are the tall necks. Transmitting the deactivation codes. That's gonna transmit the act 
At least I assume so. That'll transmit the deactivation codes to the swarms. So we've got these bootstrap silos to store raw materials. That's interesting. I am Foundry Core. I am Foundry. Yeah, it is interesting. Margo does have this very young, uh, unofficial way of talking that I really like. It captures very quickly. I just like. Okay, so there are more of these for the three cauldrons. Here, let me be wrong. It's okay for me to be wrong sometimes. Oh, I've missed a couple of these glyphs. I'm going to have to go back and look for them. All right. I've seen these shapes before, in cauldrons. But of course, the birthing places of Gaia's machines. Oh, they thought I was gonna have, I guess I must be overleveled. I am overleveled for the main story quest. Oh man, okay. Is that a way to... That can't be a way to climb up. What are those? No, those are data readings of some sort. That looks like where I'm supposed to go. I imagine if I put that hand, or put my hand there, it'll summon that. But there was a, there was another, I thought there was another data point around here. Yes, 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 everyone sees your guns. They're very impressive. I thought I saw another data point. Did I not? Did I just imagine I saw another data point? So they're all going to have. Man. Is there a way up? Th I want to go up there. I suppose I can't get there. Yeah, so the hollow projector is going to be, um, at least I assume that's going to be, um, what's her name? Uh, Margo, since we just walked right up and she started talking. This is going to be Margo, I think. Hello, I'm Margot Shen, and this is Hephaestus. As the name might tip you off, this is going to be the subordinate function that Gaia will use to make lots and lots of robots. Her personal forge. Except, it's not that simple. Um, so like, you probably noticed that only about a third of you are robotics engineers. The rest, experts in machine cognition, virtual heuristics, that stuff. Well, that's because we aren't going to be the ones designing and building robots. The last thing we want is to burden Guy with a bunch of outmoded 21st century designs. A waste of time. Our purpose is to empower Gaia to build the robots. And not just build, imagine, from scratch. Any robot she needs for any conceivable purpose, designed and fabricated at a snap of a finger. Hers. It does have Her the... Finger. This is so, important. Hephaestus Triangles isn't coming really up the with. forge. It's more like the knowledge of craft and ingenuity of a master smith to wield the hammer. Oh, check it out. Encoded as software. Whoa, this is totally. Look at that. Triangles. Totally, the triangles. Yeah, so fractal, fractals, fractal assembly. Yeah, that's like. But hey, everyone has to start somewhere. The triangular stuff. I really like Margot. I'm glad we've I'm glad we we're getting to know her a bit. It's good to have the uh It's good to have the the characters. Like it's good to have it's good to have uh insights into the characters that um will make the story matter. All right. So there's two of these that I'm missing and I don't like that. <laughs> Cause I get the feeling that once you leave here, you leave here, you know? 
So am I missing two? Because I didn't get one for... What's her name? I didn't get one for Okilo. To make her decision. Of course, they referenced her. So I know that she wound up joining. Um, but I didn't hear her, her story. And that seems like they might have included it. And see, I'm also I'm missing I'm missing this one right here. Um, that's what I meant. Yeah. And I'm missing a couple of these too. See. I don't know. I'm 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 I'm. I have I have concerns that I've missed things. Although you did tell me that it was okay. Yeah, you can see these up uh, these weird fractally triangly things that Gaia was working on. I don't know if maybe Gaia liked some life more than others is the is the issue here. Wait, hold on. Wait. Where was the uh there was a there was a there was the green door that showed up? Did you see the green door? There's a green there's a green door thing somewhere. I thought okay, well maybe not. Have I have I missed anything here? I'm just nervous. I feel like I have missed some story bits. And I'm sorry we're going well past my usual close time, which I guess I should have figured was going to happen. They did caution me that this was going to be long. Hmm. Let's see. What have we got? Okay. So the symbols over the doors will tell us. Hey, Will! This is going to be super spoilery of this game. We are in like the most spoilery place in this game. Just to warn you. But it's good to see you, friend. Let's see. I'm just trying to make sure. I feel like I've missed something. I'm concerned about that. What? Oh, that's probably the gun. I don't care about the gun. What's this over here? Oh, can I not? Oh, I can't. They won't let me snoop it. Ah, can you believe? I'm going to have to actually go through a door? Going to have to do a whole thing? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything else up here. I feel like I've snooped through hollow windows before, but not this one at least. I have been denied. Oh, here's where these guys are. How did you even get up here, guys? I think this is it. I'm losing that Silbex office. But it, it's sealed off. Oh, man. There's okay. got to be a way inside. Oh, man. Keep I keep looking. I hope I don't, like, open the door and let in bad guys, including Silence, and he's like, Mwahahaha, I sent you here to do my evil bidding. Careful now. We'll see. Oh, man, if you're just now meeting a uh, tutor, my, my friend Will, uh, Will, tell them about your Halloween costumes in the past. Happy Halloween, by the way. Did you do a costume this year? Will is one of my my um, pun master friends. We've known each other since college. And uh, good night, Blade Tiger. Well, thank you so much for joining. I'm sorry this is going to be a late one. Um. I thought to myself, oh, I can probably do this in three hours. I might have been mistaken. Can't she? She can hide forever. Is this where I'm coming from or where I'm going? I suspect my life will be easier if I shoot them now, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. I'm definitely going to want to go there because there's there's a data point. No, that's fair, Wooper. That's fair. I thought there might be... Um, 
I thought there might be like a little like precursor stuff, you know? Okay. I cannot shoot them through this. All right, good to know. Okay, what is this? I don't know what this is, but I guess this isn't this is not a thing because my uh my focus isn't telling me anything about it, so I guess I got to go down here. Oh, look at that. Data points. <clears throat> Welcome to Apollo. The collective memory of the human species and the wellspring of knowledge for future generations. I am Samina Ebaju. Until recently, I was director of the International Collective Memory Institute in New Tehran. As a heritage professional, I devoted my career to the preservation of human knowledge, creative endeavor, and cultural achievement. Apollo is, therefore, the ultimate embodiment of a lifelong passion, albeit under the very worst circumstances imaginable. The challenges before us are immense. Specifically, we will have to design and implement four major initiatives simultaneously. First, the construction of data repositories in cradle facilities around the world ensuring redundancy. Second, the collection and processing of a projected 180 million discrete data entries. 42 zettabytes of data in Mandarin, English, Spanish, and Arabic. Third, the transferal and encoding of all that data onto DNA encapsulated in synthetic fossils. The only medium capacious and durable enough to safeguard it without degradation for the centuries to come. And last, but not least, the development of the holographic interface and gamified curricula by which future humans will commune with Apollo, progressively unlocking heuristic learning modules, leveling up their knowledge and skills they will need to take control of the terraforming system. That is the future towards which all of our efforts will be directed. Not just the preservation of the past, but the seed for the flourishing of a new tree of knowledge. Welcome, and let us begin. Is that what silence wants? I think that might be what silence is looking for. That's interesting. So it's supposed to be training humans to be able to use the technology um, to then be able to shape their world and do things right. And just like, I don't know, man. That part definitely didn't happen. We have not had gamified headsets teaching us how to use um, terraforming technology, you know? Like, none of that happened. None of that came to pass, and I wonder why and how. All right, encapsulated DNA, which is a really interesting point. DNA is the only, okay, here we go. Okay, so these are the two that I was missing. DNA, the only thing, let's, let's see what Samina Ibaji has to say. And I hope you could hear that, by the way. Okay, from Samina Ibaji to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, enca encapsulated DNA. And the winner is encapsulated DNA. Over the past 10 days, I performed an exhaustive review of data storage solutions. Magnetic, optical, quantum, even that eternity tech that FAS was shilling a, a year or so ago. But every other solution has one or more fatal shortcomings. Too heavy to transport, too massive to install in the allotted space, too power intensive over the centuries, too prone to failure past 300 to 400 years, etc. Encapsulated DNA will easily hold the 40 plus zettabytes we're projecting for Apollo. There are still many details to finalize, of course. To start with, we need to select the inert material in which we'll embed the molecules, already testing 16 candidate materials, as well as design and fabricate the power systems and sealed reliquaries that will keep the DNA at negative 18 degrees Celsius for a, a thousand plus years. So, so long as I assure you that it didn't factor in my, into my decision, may I confess that I deem it entirely fitting, indeed, 
oh, propitious, I don't know if I said that word right, that we will be using the very building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge from recognized extinction. It's not just ironic, but heroic. Life as the hero beating back the forces of oblivion. In any case, much to do. Until next time, peace be with you, Sanina. That's really, really cool. That's really, really cool. Encapsulated DNA. I'm like, I can't even wrap my head around it. Like, I don't even understand it. Um, but, uh, so it's, so it's, it's, it's fitting. It's appropriate, perhaps even, even, even lucky. So the building blocks of life to preserve human knowledge, but something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong. And I, I'm very curious as to, as to what and how. I am glad that there is still all of this additional, this much more to learn, you know? There's another data point. Where are you? There you are, there you are, there you are. I want you there, data point. Can I see you? Okay. Apollo update from Samina Abaji. Let's, let's do this. This perhaps will explain why Apollo didn't work right. Something went wrong. Or maybe that's still to be discovered, but let's go for it. From Samina Abaji to Elizabeth Sobek, subject Apollo update. Over the past two months, the full benefit of our procurement of a copy of the Homer archive from Far Zenith has made itself known, and as a result, all of Apollo's key deliverables are on schedule. Apollo has already surpassed 40 million discrete data entries and continues to grow. The physical science modules are effectively complete, with soft science modules close behind. World history, cultural data, and media archives are also on schedule. Language preservation is wrapping up a bit ahead of schedule due to falling short of our goal to preserve 4,500 languages. I suppose the tragic early loss of Papua New Guinea doomed that goal from the outset. With attendant curricula development about to begin. Speaking of the heuristic curricula, they are performing well in testing with children and adolescents de demonstrating high levels of engagement with and trust in the Aristotle and Aspasia personae. Personally, I find them highly engaging, especially when they debate. I wish half my professors had been so entertaining. Peace be with you, Samina. Oh man. So the Homer archive from Farzenith, that is something that we've heard about. I swear that's something we've heard about. And I don't remember where, but that sounds familiar. Either that or I'm confusing it with something else. No, okay. No. 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 Uh. Odyssey. Euro West. Odyssey is no more. Odyssey drives ready. Okay, so it's not related to Odyssey. Okay, I thought it might be. Okay, well, that's what I thought it might be related to, and it is not. So, there goes that. Because I was wondering, what, what, if they if they brought in information from an outside source, could that have introduced some kind of corruption to it? I don't know. Maybe. These are things that I wonder. Maybe we'll find out. I'm sorry, it looks like I'm going to have to fight some more guys. It is kind of funny to have them be uh, talking about the Sundom. When, uh, like, that feels very, like, old, like, or not old, but, like, out of place here. Hold on, we're going to try this uh, again. 
Come in here, buddy. We are Nick Buntline. I think I might just have to go in and shoot these guys. Well, he went down. The game auto saves. I just don't know that I trust my. I don't know that I trust my system not to turn off. All of this lost. The ancient's greatest gift to us. Yeah, something went wrong. Greatest? How about the fact we exist at all? To abide in ignorance is a curse, Aloy. You of all people should know that. <sighs> okay. Slowly taking care of these guys one by one, like you do. She went that away. Sorry. Well, I'm glad that you uh, that you napped. I hope you're feeling better, Nick. And yeah, I don't know how far I am to uh, to a campfire, and I get that. I, I appreciate that. I just also don't want to have to redo literally the entire section, if that makes sense. Like that's what I'm most afraid of, is that. If something goes wrong with my console and it disconnects. You know. Come on, one of you guys. Somebody come in here. Come on. Oh, come on, buddies. They're not going to lose their question marks, are they? Okay, they did. Okay, good. Excellent. Let's go kill this guy. Okay, he's down. Okay. Oh, I leveled up. Cool. Okay, that guy's down. How many more are there? Not very many, I don't think. There might be more deeper inside that are not picking up yet. Let's see. We're gonna try to sneak in. Okay, there's a guy up there who's got a got a big old gun. We might want to be careful about him with his big old gun. Okay. All right. There's the big old gun fellow. Can I see him? No, I can't. Okay, well, we're gonna sneak around here. Let's see. Are they on the other side of the thing? It looks like they might be on the other side of the thing. That's the guy I wanna take down. He looks important. Let's see what happens if I sneak around here. Okay, so it does look like there's not other guys beyond these guys. Hello, buddy. Can I... Well, I want to get to this guy. Can I do this? Can I see him here? Come on. No, I can't. Okay. Well, fine. Make it so I have to actually, like... Sneak up on guys. I can't even see if he's there. They did not respond to that. Okay. Are there more guys in here then? There might be. No, it looks, oh wait. No, it looks like it's just the guys that I knew were, that I knew were here. Okay, you. Can I see you yet? No, I can't. Okay. Gonna have to sneak around here a bit. And uh, Man, so this is where data was being stored at some point, at least, from the looks of it. Okay, let's take out the bad guys first. Okay. 
There we go. Is that guy still behind the stacks? How do I... Hmm. It's like a library, you know? Like, it feels like I'm sneaking around. A library. Okay. We might have trouble. Okay, he's down. Okay, there's two. Come on. Come on, buddy. Where are you coming? Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? Right. Well, that should have been a cave of wonders. Shut up, silence. We are, uh, we are doing our best here. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm a little overleveled, which is fine, honestly. I'm not playing this game for the challenge of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm definitely overleveled. Like. Apollo Archive 200. Archive stack error cold code lock exception 01 all data lost. Okay, that sounds like that might be like... That sounds like that might be sabotage, honestly. All data lost. I mean, it could also just be bad luck. Like, that's also a perfectly reasonable thing. Like, they managed to succeed with, with part of what they wanted to do. You know? So like the important part perhaps is that life goes on. So they succeeded at that. Um, so perhaps we shouldn't be uh, considering this a failure that all of this knowledge was lost, but it is rather uh, hard, isn't it? So we're gonna go up here. I feel like this is where I'm supposed to be. Where is the, the data point? Yeah, so it's up there. All right, just looking around, making sure that I haven't overlooked anything important. I don't think so. Okay, so we will go up here and get this data point, and then we'll go there where we're supposed to go, I guess. There's still going to be a boss fight, too, I'm sure. All right, so we've got another data point, an audio one. Her Herez testimonial. Okay. Unable to archive. Stacks closed. Dr. Sobek. Please archive this testimonial in Apollo. Cross-reference to all mentions of my name and Operation Enduring Victory. My name is General Aaron Harris. From 2060 to 2066, I served as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest-ranked officer of the United States Armed Forces. The tenure of my command included strategic planning and oversight of Operation Enduring Victory. A falsehood perpetrated on the civilian populations of the United States and other nations during the last 14 months of life on this planet. Before the Pharaoh Plague, I did my job and did it well. I was bold and decisive, crafty in political maneuvers. It wasn't an accident that I rose to my position and became the commander of the largest mechanized force ever assembled. But to what end? My only lasting achievement was the extinction of life on Earth. And my one redeeming act, if any, was to delay that extinction by days or weeks, by throwing more death at it. It is my hope that there will be no need for men like me in the world to come. If you are one of the people of that future world listening to this message, please know that I am sorry and that I wish you well. Sincerely, Aaron Harris. Wow. Yeah. And I just, I wonder, because it was not archived, I kind of wonder whether Elizabeth did not put that in because she did not, 
Because we've seen them talking. We saw her, her say, um, oh shoot. We saw him say, please give this. Please, please, please archive this. And she kind of was like, you haven't done anything wrong here. And he was like, no, I want, I want to, they want my, my crimes to be known, basically. If I remember correctly. And so you kind of wonder, did she, did she decide? God. It's all destroyed. But they had it in redundant, they had redundancies, didn't they? Where am I going? Where am I going? Where's the, there's the direction that I'm going. Okay, hold on. I guess I gotta get out of here. Yeah, I killed a bunch of cultists and that's, what is that? Hollow projector. Okay, so I came from there. It is kind of funny though comparing the hollow projections here and what this place is about versus the uh, the things in a Final Fantasy VII remake. All right, I'm gonna go up here, up the ladder. Come on, Eloy, up the ladder. Oh, there we go. Okay, I just, as it turns out, suck at climbing ladders. As Thomas from Suicode and Three would say, ladders aren't my strong suit. So that has the baby cradle. And then something else besides the baby cradle. Okay, yeah, just a bunch of guns. Oh, those are guys I killed earlier, I think. All right. Okay, there's a ton. Wow, there is so much going on. This is a very big, a lot, lot, lots of Welcome stuff. Welcome to Hades. Zero Dawn's extinction failsafe protocol. The ultimate killer app. Now, I know what you're thinking. The purpose of Gaia is to resurrect life. So why give her a subordinate function, only purpose of which is to wipe out life all over again? I mean, what the, what? Just bum crazy, ain't it? Well, no, it isn't. Reconstituting a biosphere? That's a tall order. Tech smart as Gaia may be, Odds are she won't get it right the first time. I mean, imagine your guy 200 years from now and this new biosphere growing, it's all gone wrong. Alkalines are skyrocketing, coniferous forests eroding under the lash of superstorms that would have drowned Noah. It's chaos, a spinning top that won't stop wobbling. Now, what are you gonna do? Release phase one organisms into that hot mess? Hope their CO2 and methane can balance out what you got started? Hell no. What you're gonna do, Gaia, is step aside while Hades takes over and does what you're just too darn nurturing and life-loving to do. Which is burn that misbegotten mess of a biosphere to the ground so Gaia can start over. Okay, not burn, more like reverse terraforming operations and suffocating. But you get the idea. Hades takes the biosphere back to zero. Square one, blank slate. And then, only then, does I hand the steering wheel back to Gaia and say, try again, old girl. And better this time, or we'll have to do this again. That's Hades. It's pretty badass when you think about it. Extinction on demand. Death on speed dial. All for the greater good, of course, but still, kind of metal. <laughs> So welcome to Hades. Welcome to the Void. Okay, so if that's the original purpose of Hades, why does it want me extinct? We need more data. And how does it end up in the wreckage of a Pharaoh Titan, getting worshipped by the Eclipse like some kind of god? I'm learning as you are, Aloy. Keep searching. Oh man, okay. All right, so I assume that Hades is attempting to wipe things out because it feels that it has done things wrong. I guess it's not necessarily a corrupt external AI. Yeah. Whew. Well, I can't say I called that. <laughs> 
we're well beyond my hole in one territory. I'm I'm taking my hole in one of where I got it, but now we're like going off into into totally new directions. So let me uh let me do some more reading here, shall we? All right. Noise complaints. From Travis Tate. From Travis Tate to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject. Noise complaints, in quotes. Color me confounded, Lizzie. Bashcore? Anyone who says the old TT codes to Bashcore is straight up lying and you know it. Old Trav don't have no truck with commercialized razzle dazz, nah uh. Heck, I'd rather guzzle a liter of sit sit a rum runoff than listen to Grey Swarm for 30 seconds. Hand to God and swear on my mama's grave and she was religious. Now that ain't Bashcore blasting the Hades lab, shaking the walls, rattling, rattling folks' teeth. It's death metal, girl. Classical music, 80s and 90s mostly. Got me some Dutch deathcore, some Japanese gore grind, some Swedish cannibal themed stuff too. Stop by if you want to listen, or heck, just come within 50 meters of the lab. Ain't no bashcore, you'll see, or hear rather, in the screech that rends the air and feel in the throbbing pulse of the floor and walls and ceiling swallow you up like you were Jonah trapped in the gullet of gothic deathfish. Hallelujah. As for those requests to turn it down, no can do, Lizzie. This is how I code. Turn down my death metal. Might as well give up stimulants, chocolate malts, and industrial accent <laughs> bits. Last I heard, we were supposed to be coding Hades down here. Am I really supposed to code an extinction protocol without death metal to inspire me? No, no, I don't think so. Stay cool. Try. <sighs> the, I, the moment I saw noise complaints and quotes, I was like, is he listening to death metal? My friends, he is listening to death metal. He's really something. All right, he is a character, capital C character. And that is really interesting because I suspect we're going to see the life and death of folks here, you know. So we're getting to know the characters involved here and that's going to make us know and care about what happens here and why it's happening and what goes wrong. Yeah, probably, Chrono. All right, let's keep going. Hades Protocol. All right. Tate here, just popping three blues, but I earned it. Finally figured out a Goldilocks solution to Gaia's rather extreme executive authority. If that ain't worth 10 to 12 hours of dream time, what is? Before this, every usurpation protocol I designed failed in simulation because it was either too hard or too soft. Too hard and it degraded the Gaia core. Sure, it pried her figurative fingers off the figurative driving wheel so Hades could take control, but by breaking her fingers, sometimes her arms too, so that couldn't fly. Everything depends on Gaia taking control back after Hades has done its business, so I had to find a solution that didn't leave Gaia any worse for the wear. Too soft and Gaia only pretended to relinquish control. In simulation after simulation, Hades would take command of the terraforming system and reverse operations only to have Gaia lurk in the background, quietly re-reversing processes and falsifying telemetry to hide its interference. Sneaky. I swear ain't nothing Gaia wouldn't do to keep life going, even when it's just simulated plant life. Turns out the just right solution is to isolate Gaia in a protective code shell, preserving its integrity, then unseat it from command position so Hades can slip into the figurative captain's chair and work its magic. Um, those blues are coming on strong now, so I'm not really describing it so clear, but pretty sure it'll work. Yeah, those blues are plenty strong. Guess it's time to sleep in bed. I'll back to it tomorrow, alligators. Whoo. Okay. This is probably not good. This is probably not good for us. It's interesting also, you'll notice some of the others refer to Gaia as she. He does not. Yes, see you later, alligator. But he's a little too uh, a little too far gone at that point. Anyway, sorry, I'm only so good at doing uh, doing the delivery on him, but he's pretty fun, so there's not much. Oh, did I kill a dude over here or did somebody else kill a thing over here? Because this looks like a slightly different color stuff happened. I don't know. Wait, oh, did he call it? Did he call it? Because he was saying a lot of it for both Hades and Gaia. So. At least primarily. Let's see what we got here. Archive abuse from Samina Ibaji. 
This can't be good. There's going to be conflict, of course, between the true idealist and that fellow. From Samina Ibaji to Travis Tate, CC Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, archive abuse. Mr. Tate, this mail concerns Apollo Archive Submission number 00002387 your 666th submission in just five days, and oh, what a doozy. Despite earlier warnings re inappropriate materials, you chose to submit 265 holographic remasters of acknowledged classics of extreme exploitation cinema. Allow me, then, to thank you on two counts. One, for giving me the pleasure of rejecting your submission, thereby consigning your favorite Eastern European torture flicks and their ilk to the dust heap of oblivion. It truly warms my heart to know that I have saved future humanity from the ordeal of experiencing not just one, but all 16 installments of Making a Millipede. Don't worry, the Pasolini material has already been preserved. Extreme, perhaps, but art. Two, for clarifying a concept that has so long been ambiguous and ethically fraught for archivists such as myself, the definition of obscenity. You have freed me from the subjective quagmire embodied in judges, Judge Potter's famous utterance, I know it when I see it. Thanks to you, I can now apply a single objective criterion. If Travis Tate submitted it, it's obscene. Accordingly, I have directed Apollo staff to summarily reject all of your future submissions sight unseen. Perhaps you might invest the time you would have spent preparing further submissions on, oh, I don't know, your assigned work. We have a world to save after all, or the rest of us do anyway. Dr. Samina Ibaji. I wonder what he tried to submit that was very important and perhaps messed things up. Oh, it would, if it was just human pettiness that resulted in things going wrong. Not cruelty, not evil, not... What happened here? Not sabotage. Looks like the only way onwards. But just, he was kind of a jerk. And she didn't want to deal with it anymore. Well, that would be interesting. And yes, seems like it would be appropriate. Now, I know we're going to get to the baby section at some point. Are these what I, what I think they are? Artificial wounds. Yeah. Welcome to Eleuthia, the crown and king of Gaia's subordinate functions. For it is by Eleuthia that the human race will continue to exist. I am Patrick Brochard Klein, the Alpha in charge of this program. Now let one thing be perfectly clear from the outset. Eleuthia is not a genetic engineering project. Okay. Our goal is to preserve the human genome, not alter it. A snapshot of human genetic diversity, literally frozen in time. The genetic quintessence of our species, unmodified. Under my watch, our activities and initiatives will comply with the 2034 clone provisions and the 2048 rally accords. Mm. Now that may seem a quaint, even trivial concern to you in light of present circumstances. But, as one of the authors of the Accords, it is far from trivial to me. The practical challenges before us are staggering in scope and complexity, but not insurmountable. No. Global collation and provisional storage of zygotes, perfection of exogenic technologies, design and perfection of servitors to provide nurture and inculcation during early child development. All of these program components must and will proceed in tandem. To say nothing of the breakneck construction of cradle facilities at sites around the world. So. Si vous êtes prêt, ah. Let us begin. That's a nice touch. I feel like they let the actor... Because some of the lines are not exactly 100% the way they were um, written. I feel like they're letting the actors kind of bring some personality to the characters. Make the lines sound a bit more natural. Interject language where necessary. I'm really curious about this. Because the cradles were one of the only parts that I had thought through. Um... Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's really neat. 
for him to be somebody who was responsible for uh, the codes that kept people from doing unethical things. Of course, he's the one who's in charge of this project. Let's see how things went wrong here. FC Chambers. I'm going to get his last name spelled wrong, or pronounced wrong, I'm sorry. So he's Patrick Bouchard Klein to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, FC Chambers. The ectogenic chambers arrived two days ago. I've spent the last 36 hours examining them and poring over technical documentation. They're a revelation. Astonishing. I don't know what you had to give Farzenith and Trey to get these chambers, but it was worth it. In a single leap, their embryologists have vaulted past 50 years of technological shortcomings. The risk of ECMO resolved. Nutrition delivery resolved. Hormonal stability resolved. 12 other risk areas resolved. Before I examined these chambers, I considered the Odyssey to be a fool's errand. But if the rest of FC's technology is at this level, well, a human colony around Sirius doesn't seem so impossible after all. Mass fabrication of the chambers will present a number of challenges, but I'm confident they can be resolved. I'm going to rest for a few hours, then get back to it. Expect a fabrication plan within 48 hours. PBK. Okay, so the Odyssey was um, what? Uh, that was the project that got scrapped. But they had incredible technology. I just, I wonder, I wonder what happened there. I suppose we'll find out. But so they've done tremendous work. Whoever Farzenith is. Because Farzenith sound, that's why I went looking to see if that was connected to Odyssey in some way, because um, it sounds like something in space, <laughs> you know? It would make sense. All right, Cradle Servitor Person A. All right, I will spare you my mispronunciation of Patrick's last name. I apologize. Uh, to Elizabeth Sobek, subject, Cradle Servitor Person A. Development of the artificial person A for cradle servitors, nurturer, disciplinarian, healer, continues at a good pace. We are targeting Turing 0.4 for these constructs. This should allow low-grade empathy and limited improvisation without undermining adherence to codified behavior sets. The stimulus-driven switching of person A, however, is proving to be a greater software challenge than anticipated, especially concerning our entrenched feedback loops between the disciplinarian and healer person A. I have... Also attached the reports from an incident where a servitor running the mother person A intervened on a disciplinarian servitor's behavior. Parental argument, if you will. Amusing on first glance, perhaps, but deeply concerning. I have attached a comprehensive plan for correcting these interactive protocol shortcomings. And just... So in other words, they've got these different um, artificial intelligences that are designed to raise up the, the, the future humans, but the different pieces don't get along. And they don't agree with each other's methods. Um, and as interesting as it is, like, oh, they're human. Like, you know, that's that's so parents, you know. Um, as much as that's the case, um, it's also, as he says, like, it makes sense that that's, a, that's a, a very dangerous thing. So there's another kind of weak point in the system, in the plan. We'll see how much they're actually able to pull off. Cradle sealed. Okay. From Patrick to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject, cradle sealed. Eluthia 01 was successfully sealed before the swarm advancing across Xinjiang province could detect it. Ping back from crucial systems is good. For our maiden voyage, a success. Regards my disputes with the betas over zygote selection... Of course I understand we have limited overhead to run simulations of gene flow in our future humans, but we can all agree there is margin for refinement in future cradle populations. Dong. Oh, therefore. Um, in addition to personally overseeing completion of the Ilithia O2 site inside Mount Namuli, I will formulate and propose a modified zygote selection plan within the week. M margin for refinement in future cradle populations. I just, I wonder what that means. Ah, oh, thank you, Dark Puck. So they're trying to get them in place before the swarm overrides the region, each region, where they can. 
they are really making a point that this is a very, very, very international, very, very um, multicultural process and project. And that is challenging, but also key. And I'm glad it's not the Americans are the saviors of us all. Like this isn't like, um, uh, the Independence Day movie, as much as I enjoy that movie for all of its cheesy terribleness. It, it is pretty Crime appalling. Facilities. Elizabeth said a, a new generation of humans would be spawned inside such places. She did. All Mother Mountain. It was one of them? There's only one way to be sure. The hatch wouldn't open. Something, something about a corrupted alpha registry. I need to search Elizabeth's office. Hmm. Oh yeah, no, I'm not necessarily saying that I expected them to do that. It's just, it's nice that they didn't, um, when sometimes stories do that, um, that are created by Americans. And a lot of stories were created by Americans for a long time, um, that I consumed. There have obviously been plenty of stories that are otherwise. All right, so the fact that this is here makes me wonder if there's more data points lurking around the corner. Where have I not been? All right, well, there's a path there that I cannot take. Presumably it would go to a different location. Can I go through this one? No, I cannot. That one looks like a turtle. Oh, goodness. I probably don't want to be in this water. Um. Oh, that's to get out of the water. Okay. Oops. Well, or maybe I have to... Are you alive? Okay. Yeah, it's a little concerning. Okay, and then we're gonna go here. And then we're gonna go up. I hope I haven't lost any- or lo uh, missed anything. Have I missed anything? Yes, no? Sorry, my natural inclination is to explore everywhere, even though I know that time is not on my side here. I think she might have taken damage from something. Yes, mountains with cradles definitely does seem to be the trend. Yes, that's the impression I got too. It looks like it used to hold something. Some component that got removed. This isn't good. This is not good. Something bad. Something has happened. Us would benefit from antilopony morphologies. Though Kempert forms show superior load bearing capability. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the quaternary extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Gaia? Logically speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet... And yet... I find the loss of megafaunal species... ...unaccountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion... ...causes me to experience... ...a grief... ...that is difficult to describe. Am I malfunctioning? <sighs> no, no, Gaia, you're not. It this is good. It's very good. Is she going to be angry with humanity for having killed everything else, though? Because I kind of feel like that might be the case. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek, as I have conducted this comparative analysis of mammalian morphologies, I've gathered extensive data on the quaternary extinction event. Oh? And your assessment? Gaia? Logically speaking, the extinction was a natural consequence. And yet... And yet... 
I find the loss of megafaunal species uncountably sad. That they passed forever into oblivion causes me to experience a grief that is difficult to describe. Am I malfunctioning? No, no, Gaia, you're not. This is good. It's very good. All right. Let's take a look at this and see what's up. You will undergo a brief period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime and final statement. Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? When you're back up and running at the new site, we'll bring the subordinate functions online and see where we stand. Elizabeth, I detect distress. Are you all right? I'm fine. I realize that circumstances compel us to launch earlier than we hoped, but all subsystems are operational. The odds stand in our favor. But what if... Guy, there's nothing left out there. You can't even survive unless you're wearing an environmental suit. There are billions dead in fear and agony. What if... What if it was all for nothing? Elizabeth, extinction was inevitable. Thanks to you, life will have a future. You really believe that? I believe in you, Elizabeth. In you, all things. I'm just gonna need Aloy. She's gonna need Aloy to talk to her. Because she doesn't have faith necessarily in anyone else, but she has faith in Elizabeth. <sighs> I was really hoping I have to admit it there was a certain degree of for my own personal comfort was where the whole oh we're going to do something that will make the world not suffer because the thought of everybody dying horribly is really really upsetting and the sort of thing that my brain can only touch very lightly on um but, uh, I guess not. Something was removed, presumably her. Is there one more in here? Okay, because that one we've looked at. Though Capric forms show superior load-bearing capability. You're a quick study, Gaia. Dr. Sobek. As a... You will undergo a brief period of unconsciousness during relocation to Prime I don't see a cube is the thing I'm looking for a cube oh oh there's a cube there's a cube there's a cube I see it I see it here we go here we go Pure logic won't cut it, Ted. To pull this off, Gaia's going to need to have some skin in the game. It has to care. What if it runs amok? Have we learned nothing from our mistakes? Your mistakes, I think you I mean? about to say. All I'm saying is give it a kill switch. She was just born, Ted. I'm not going to put a gun to her head while she's still in the cradle. You talk like it's a child. What if it becomes a monster? Elizabeth, may I speak outside protocol? <sighs> of course, Gaia. Go on. I'm sorry to contradict you, but Mr. Farrow's argument is sound. At this point, the development of my psyche is not entirely predictable. To ensure preservation of life, a hardwired override is, I believe, a necessary safeguard. There. Satisfied, Ted? Geez, let's just do what it says. Wow. Wow. Oh, Gaia. Uh, there's so many ways things could have wrong gone wrong. Could have been sabotage. Could have been a. Uh, could have been. Uh. Could have been things falling apart. Could have been various other ways in which things could, like ha like just, just mistakes, programming errors, running out of time, um. Petty personal squabbles. AI, gone rogue, any number of things. Like there are so many potential weaknesses. Okay, so now I have to figure out how I'm gonna get in there. I really am not sure on this, because here's a door. 
Oh. Or I could just jam my spear in there. That is a, that is a possibility. Thanks, Aloy. Sorry. I did not think about that. I should have thought about that. Oh, they're gonna make me fight a boss, aren't they? All right, that looks like what I'm supposed to do. So we're gonna do this instead. Odyssey has failed from Elizabeth Sobeck. All right, Odyssey has failed from Elizabeth Sobeck to all alphas. Subject, Odyssey has failed. All? Some terrible news, I'm afraid. Friar Zenith has informed me that the Odyssey mission has failed. Last night, telemetry indicated a catastrophic antimatter containment failure as the drives spun up to depart the solar system. The ship, its crew, its cargo of zygotes and seeds, its alpha builds of Apollo, all were lost. Zero Dawn is now the only hope for the continuation of the human species and earthly life. We must succeed. Elizabeth. Catastrophic antimatter containment failure. That's interesting. Because I don't know that we knew that Odyssey was even still going on, if I remember correctly. Where was that? Odyssey drives. We're ready for the Odyssey's engines, but that didn't work. Here, we're saying Odyssey couldn't happen because of terrestrial all to human conflicts. Perhaps foreshadowing what wound up happening later. I don't know. Oh, uh, man. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, we assume since we like learned about the advancement that Far Zenith had done. I don't know if maybe I'm missing some data point that will tell me that Far Zenith took over what the various or um, different uh, countries around the world couldn't do. Yeah. Let's see what this one says. Artemis status from Charles Ronson to Elizabeth Sobek. Subject Artemis status. It's coming along, Liz. I'm positive about it, if those words can still mean anything. Had my sleeves rolled up negotiating with frozen zoos for their samples, so many species trapped in ghoulish hologram dioramas, suspended in what's if, what ifs, more than 14,000 that went extinct between 2000 and 2043. We've started mapping out primary succession, selecting the pioneer organisms for a balanced and sustainable biosphere, microorganisms and insects, rabbits and hawks, foxes and wolves, thousands more that will have to wait their turn until our new generation can be entrusted with the duty of restoring them so they can return to a world that this time will understand the concept of conservation before it's too late there's already been too many lates we lost a whole collection team during the swarm breakthrough in Myanmar the samples we lost were well irreplaceable but thanks to you Liz the circle of life will bend not break the earth was a lifeless rock before and someday it will be again but not now not like this not on our watch Bronson. Oh. Okay, so this does explain why there's limited creatures running around the world. That that I, that is in fact how it is. They 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 they've chosen pioneer organisms that we are encountering um and may eventually be able to introduce further animals or not. But because we did not oh, look at that. There's just a microwave hanging out here because we have not been trained in how to do that. The world is limited, and I wonder if that will ever change or if that information is lost forever. It's a beautifully written line, it is. Just a little details, a little human details of like her microwave. I don't know if that's a coffee maker. Like, A person was here you know I just have I missed anything or shall I interact with Elizabeth Sobek's terminal I just uh I don't know it's just very sad and very beautiful yes chat hat on
Okay. Thank you for being my expert on the case. All right, then let's do this. Let me see if we get insight into what went wrong and what we're facing now. Because there are dangers that I didn't know existed that are out there, and I don't know what they are or the scope of them. The Alpha Registry Master File. Intact? Yeah. No signs of corruption. Then what are you waiting for? Copy the file. With this, I can restore the registry at the hatch inside Allmother. Open it. Go inside. And grasp the secrets within. Where I was born. Maybe. Maybe who gave birth to me. Who? Are you really so naive? There will be no who waiting for you there, Aloy. Whatever birthed you into the world was a what, not a who. You bastard. Oh no, I had a legitimate birth. It's you, Aloy, who are the creation of a machine. But what kind of machine and why? Why were you created? Because Gaia is lonely, or Gaia needs her for some reason. Oh no. Eclipse. You need to get out of there. What you found is too valuable. You're too valuable. Assume we're going to be in his sun ring. My entire life, I've always known one thing with prophetic certainty that I was destined for glory as a great champion of the sun. Even when Jaron was murdered, even when Meridian fell, I never doubted my destiny. Until you came along. When I heard that you had survived, a doubt took root in my mind. As sure as the sun rises and falls each day, those I am bade to kill die. And yet I failed. How? Why? With each dig site you attacked, each loyal soldier you killed, this pestering doubt grew. It grew when High Priest Bahavas went missing, and when the true Sun King Itamen was snatched away. It not only grew, but multiplied. I kept thinking of the moment my knife pierced your throat. One twist, a simple tug of the blade, and you would have bled out. In slaughter, I am a practiced hand. So why hesitate? Why fail my destined purpose? Because somebody loved her. See that scar on your cheek? You didn't get to finish. Yes, I remember. He fought well. For a savage. His name was Rost. And he was a better man than you could ever hope to be. The better man? is the one who doesn't end up with his guts steaming on the ground. <laughs> no. It wasn't him. I could have finished you before he attacked. But I didn't. This failing troubled my thoughts. Haunted every step. It was only when I captured you, down in that place, that I finally glimpsed the sun's design etched at length across the course of events. You were meant to survive that day on the mountain. Meant to interfere at dig sites and kill my men. Meant to eliminate High Priest Bahavas. Meant to snatch Itaman away. Conversely, 
I was meant to capture you. Here. So that you might die as a sacrificial offering to the sun. Everything as it was meant to be. Predestined and preordained. <laughs> some destiny. You're following orders, not some grand cosmic design. You're a puppet, with Hades yanking the strings. A pawn pushed around by larger forces. It'd be laughable if there weren't so much killing involved. Hades is an ancient machine, not the buried shadow of Karja myth. It doesn't care about Meridian. It wants to kill everything and everyone. And you are its dutiful slave. I serve not the buried shadow, but the sun in shadow. All halves of nature join to one cause. Shadow to sun, dark to light. Do you really not hear how ridiculous that sounds? You've gone from serving an insane homicidal Sun King to an insane homicidal machine. You're moving down in the world, not up. I'll remember those words as I watch your corpse burn. Whatever's left of it. You fail to grasp the point. As surely as you've been conquered, so has all doubt. And with certainty of belief, comes unstoppable force. Then you just cage and put your faith to the test. See if things work out like you expect. The circle has closed. Every element is in its proper place. Exactly where it belongs. What's he going to have me fight? The errant beast, now caged, will serve her true purpose. A sacrificial animal. Oh, speaking of sacrifice, I forgot to tell you. After you crash the Eclipse Network, I sent messengers into the East to rally the forces there and mount an invasion of the Sacred Land. I ordered every Nora killed. I was hoping to catch you there, but alas, it all seems to have been unnecessary. Why butcher dozens of innocents for no gain? It's a waste of effort. You're right. I won't even be there to enjoy it. In any case, I couldn't recall the order even if I wished to. Thanks to your destruction of the network, communication over distances is impossible. You not only doomed yourself, but an entire tribe. Do we not see the scorching judgment of the sun in these events? Your focus. Such a powerful device, isn't it? And yet, so fragile. <sighs> so you see, this time, I did not hesitate. The knife has already been twisted. Faithful, rejoice! Our years in shadow are over. A new dawn trembles on the horizon. A new day soon to break. And when it does, the false Sun King will be dead, and Holy Meridian ours once more. In this, I have become an instrument of prophecy. All halves of nature join to one cause. Shadow to sun, light to dark, night to day. Behold! Who 
hold your seats! Can you not see the proof of the sun's blessing before your eyes? How else could shadows such as these prowl in broad light of day? Were they not approved by the sun and joined to our cause? Many years ago, to consecrate this great ring, the Radiant Turan ordered many faithless crushed beneath the hooves of the behemoth. Mighty is the behemoth in the eye of the sun, but it is mightier still in view of the power of shadow. Let this one, who schemed and slithered, be the first to die. Let her be the first of thousands. Yeah. I don't know where my weapons are. I don't know if I have my weapons. We'll find out. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, honey. I'll never beat that thing without weapons. My weapons are up on the platform. There's no way out of this room. Maybe I could use the strength against it. It has rocks. It throws rocks. My menu not available right now. So cool. I'm glad she's cooler than me. Ah, that's a nice way of avoiding having to animate something. Hey! Guess who got her weapons back? Now you're just a big dumb target. Come and get it! I don't actually know. Oh, thank you, Aloy. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. I don't know what she said to do. Oh, am I out of arrows? Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. Oh, Hold on, sorry. Maybe those carcasses have parts I can use. Like our shells, okay. That would have been really nice to hit. Oh, shoot. Ah. Uh. Jeez, 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 jeez. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Ah. Uh, fire's really good. Silence. Did you know that? Did you know fire's really good? Oh dear. This is not good. Shadows. Kill her. All right. I'm gonna set them on fire. Sorry, it's a lot louder. I'm trying to manage the uh. Kill her! Why leave it to them? Come get me yourself! So you're here. Really here. You risked your life. Of course I did. If you'd been killed, the Nora's sacred mountain would never have given up its secrets. Too bad you wasted your time, then. Helis destroyed my focus. And the Alpha Registry with it. Not at all. The whole time I've been monitoring your focus, I've duplicated every data file you scanned. Installing that data to a new focus was trivially easy. Happy birthday, Isaac. Daddy sure does love his little big man. You're really good at making it impossible to like you, Silence. But I guess I need this. It's time to see where you were born. Maybe you'll even learn why. Yeah. Meet the machine that birthed me into this world. Isn't that how you put it? I'll be off. Uh, wait. <sighs> yes? I want to ask him everything, so I'm going to do that now. He better let me. Helis recognized you back in the Sunring. You told me that you'd assisted the Eclipse. Not that you knew the man who killed my... Who almost killed me. So now you know. The man is a serious threat. So let's do all we can to make sure that he and Hades don't succeed. Right. Since when can you override machines? Ever since you discovered the technique. I had to destroy a corrupter to obtain the necessary parts, of course. But your example showed me how to do that as well. Yet another benefit of monitoring your activities through your focus. Truth be told, the underlying logic of the technique isn't so different from rites practiced by Banuk shamans. Though, of course, far more advanced. Great. You're welcome, I guess. I mean, I, 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 this is actually probably the least interesting of the questions because it's kind of obvious where she was going to be. How did you track my location when I wasn't wearing a focus? Really, Aloy. <laughs> it doesn't take a genius to surmise that Helis would throw you into the sun wing at high noon. Yes, fair. I wore out two striders getting here in time, but I did. Now be on your way. I guess that's everything. Aloy is peeved. I mean, the man saved her life, but also she's peeved. Well, there's a lot there. And I'm, it's going to probably come back to be something that I'm unhappy about. That he has been spying on her forever, you know? It's probably going to be an issue at some point. But yes, he did turn out. He did say she was too important to let go. And lo and behold, at least he acted on that. I'll be on my way. 
To make matters worse, Helis ordered an Eclipse detachment to attack the Nora's sacred land. The tribe's already weak. They won't stand a chance. You should come with me. Oh, absolutely not. I have preparations to make elsewhere. What kind of... Why do I bother asking? You're not gonna tell me. When the time is right, I'll be in touch. I'll contact you later. In the meantime, should you need to return to Shadow Carja territory, I brought armor to conceal your identity. You think of everything, don't you? One of us has to. Oh my god. Aloy, when you were recovering the Alpha Registry down in the Zero Dawn bunker, I was needlessly cruel. For your sake, I hope there is someone waiting there for you inside the mountain. Not a what, but a who. Yeah! Okay. I did not see that coming. Wow. That was a lot. Shadow stalwart light. I'm just, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a whole, whole lot to have happen. So I think I'm gonna teleport someplace safe and save. <laughs> Where is a nice safe place I can save? This looks like a nice safe place I can save. This isn't right by the T-Rex, is it? I don't think so. Is this by the T-Rex? No. Maybe. I don't know. There's a campfire right behind me. Is there? Oh, there is. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's nice of them. Also nice of them that I didn't uh, lose my focus for long. Also, I'm glad I'm over-leveled because it would have been really kind of frustrating. It is, it is pretty late for me. It is almost midnight. Yeah, the music is strange. How do I dismount? That's not dismount. That's the opposite of dismounting, Lauren. That's... That's dismounting. Okay, I did it. I did it. Good job. Corruption glaze root. Nobody cares about you, corruption glaze root. Okay. Hold on, we're gonna we're actually safe properly. Thank you so much, folks. I There's a lot to process, and I feel like I should process it. But I think I'm gonna need some time to think on it. Because there's so much. Like, so much. So much. Do you mind... Do you folks mind if we pick up next stream with just talking about stuff after I've had a little time to sit and think? You've now had, you, you've gotten the, the pure unadulterated Lauren's feelings. Um, but, but I don't know that we've had much Death of the like it's under my skin. Lauren's thinkings. Um, okay. Okay, thank you all so much for being here. Um, I really appreciate you hanging out with me despite um <laughs> there was we went a little bit late and a lot happened uh yeah no this was very exciting it was definitely worth uh pushing aside whatever side quests to do i'm gonna go maybe yell in the direction of my roommate who loves this game she's the one who got aloy's spear tattooed on her arm which looks awesome by the way um so uh, she's probably gonna be going to bed shortly and i should too but man I will say silence, silence showing up and silence apologizing might be the biggest shocker <laughs> of this whole thing. Oh, no, I'm just I'm really happy to have gotten to know the people who are part of that team a bit better. And I hope that we'll see more of them. Uh, they're really good at giving you strong feelings about characters with very little information. Um, it's great. It's awesome. They're really good at what they do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go get ready for bed. Um, but take care of yourselves, folks, okay? Take care of yourselves, and uh, I will be playing more Stray tomorrow. I'm going to try to get the Stray video up, or not tomorrow. I'll be playing Stray on Thursday. I'll try to get the video up tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for being here. This was great fun. <laughs> A little bit heavy, but fun. Good night.